Mitch. I'm Mitch. I don't give a fuck. I am Mitch. I am Groot. <laughs> hey, how's it going, everyone? It's time for Honesty Hour, and we're going to answer your... Sh I mean, your questions. Mm-hmm. <laughs> in order of how they appeared in the Discord room. If you're a subscriber, head over to hashtag Honesty Hour, the room, and Discord, and ask your questions, and we'll get to them. There's a lot of them. Yeah. There's a lot of them, so... Let's do this. Uh, I'm up for anything. Sweet. Sweet. First off, how's it going, everybody? Hey! Happy tell winter, us about you. Happy winter and shit. <laughs> Wait, this was a solstice. You know? Oh man, I mean, a lot of people who are watching are probably like, actually our audience is unique. A lot of Twitch channels, their audience is <laughs> unique, like in unique. school. No, my son is unique. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. Our audience is older. They're they're more our age. Our, oh, our age, yes. The two of us. Hey, on Twitch, that's like, they lump us into one side. <laughs> is that right? It's like once you get above 25, you're just the old geezer number on Twitch, basically. Wow. Uh, we are great. not the norm by any means on uh, this platform. Well, Adele says I remind him of his dad. Great. Somebody asked, I need to refund my do mortgage. This? Who do you yeah. recommend in the mortgage yeah. industry? Yeah. <laughs> Your dad. Enjoy. So let's get started with the question. Sure. But I was gonna say a lot of people were on break, uh, like Christmas break type stuff, because they were in school and right, shit. Right, right. But our channel, not so much. <laughs> There's probably a lot of college students in our chat. Thank you, Malevins. Malevins. Wow, really? Malevins. Very respectful. Firecrow, I understand that we don't get lumped until we break fifty, but I feel like overall, according to Twitch analytics, we're like. At Congratulations, I'm like, alone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Um, all right, so the first question came all the way back from Negiyama. Hey. At, uh... Hey, Prosper Scar. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. Um, Mitch, when are you planning on opening a micro distillery so we can all buy some of the Lord Commander's private stock of hooch? Read the next comment. What's the very next comment? Side Eye says, I want to know the answer to that too. I would like to be a bourbon heiress. Bourbon heiress. Right, you don't want to be a video game heiress? Cause I'm- I already am. Yeah, cause I'm rich as Pharaoh. Uh, I, I, my dream, and this is a true, a, a true story, and my wife and I have been scouting locations. I want to open my own cigar club. A cigar club. Right, because in- Oh my God, you're it, such an old douchebag. No, no, what? what <laughs> Yes, but <laughs> the idea is in in Seattle, you can't smoke inside unless yeah. you're a private club. Yeah. So the idea is I open up a private club, but you can buy a one-day membership. So, like, you're just charging people to get inside it's and a smoke coverage. cigars inside. Business genius. Anyway, so, yeah, I want to be a when bartender. When they can just walk outside for free and... They can't smoke with me. <laughs> Boom! <laughs> Boom! That's how you become an heiress. Definitely a douchebag. So, uh, the shoe fits. <laughs> That's what it is. I was born a douchebag. Mitch, rye or wheat? <laughs> <laughs> rye with uh, with caraway seeds. Yeah. Um, Mitch, what is your opinion on single malt grain scotch, or am I a pompous ass? Yes, and I love single malt grain scotch. Uh, my go-to, just for the record, is Glenlivet because it's relatively cheap and it doesn't stay in my house very long. Uh, no the, bottles stay in my house The next question tagged long. onto that was if I've ever enjoyed a nice proper single malt, and the answer is no. The most alcohol I've ever had in my life is a couple sips of wine and that's it. Sure, I understand that. We've agreed that won't change. We've had this conversation yeah. already. Sorry. I'm cool with that. Yeah. Uh, what's man. that? Yeah, I'll take his. It's cool. Arizon clone number eight hundred and sixty. Oh, eight sixty is my favorite. Go ahead. Uh, Zach, have you ever considered getting drunk just to find out what it's like, or is aversion to lose control too strong to even consider it? That's one aspect of it. Plus, it runs in the family, so I, I'm so much my father's child. I know what's up. <laughs> yeah. I know what's up. I don't need to. I know that there's a. Uh, there's a um, a Bad darkness. Spec. Ooh, there's a darkness. And by no. that I mean an intensity that apparently in the Eubank family gets intensified upon drinking. My father has it, I have it, and my sister has it. 
Mm. See what I did there? That's a Star Wars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wake up, pal. That being said, my my middle or my youngest brother Lucas mm -hmm. doesn't seem to have that intensity. He has the I'm gonna take my pants off and run around Comic Con. <laughs> That's the Lucas. It's it's just two sides of the same yeah. coin. <laughs> two sides of the same coin, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> um. Hey, new subscriber! What? New C World? What? What? Wait, guy, over, buddy. I also have a confession to make because I know Malika is watching. Malika, this is one of your Christmas presents and they shipped the wrong size, so I'm wearing it. <laughs> Whoops. Whoops. We'll make it up to you. That's what happens when you order things off eBay that look cool. What I'm wearing under Sorry. here, you can have. She can have this. Oh, she can have that? Yeah, what's under here? Yeah, it's, yeah, cool. Cool. it's a Johnny Cash t-shirt. Sweet. Cool. Sweet. Uh -oh. Thanks for that subscription. <laughs> yes, very, very much. Very much appreciate it. Uh, Mitch, if you could get the rights to develop any game you wanted, what game would you pick? Other than the ones you've already got the rights for. Any game I wanted, I want my crack at Star Wars. That's all. I was a child of the 70s, baby. Which, which, uh, what, okay, so there's many different, like, I mean, I guess Star Wars exists, like, in the gaming world, and pretty much every genre of game. Yeah. What yeah. what kind of Star Wars games would you want to make? Uh, RPG, you know, Kotor, that kind of thing. Kotor's mm -hmm. a great game. Oh yeah, you know, those guys know how to make a game. Um, so you just want to kind of, you know, ride off their coattails, is what you're saying? Yeah, that's that's my whole career, okay, just okay. doing what other people do. Um, <laughs> man, I wish that weren't the case. I'd have a couple of bucks, <laughs> and she could be an heiress. But when you go first, it turns out that doesn't mean you're rich. Ah. Um, yeah, I guess so. You know, what I really like the story-based games. That's the big thing. All the mm -hmm. Shadowrun games, it was always about the story. In Battletech, for me, it's all about the story. That's what I'm personally working on. So, yeah, you know, actually, there's a game... A lot of times, the, the best compliment I can give a game when I'm playing it is I say, oh man, I wish I made this game. Yeah. Right? And that, for me... I take it back. You know what I want? I want my crack at the Dark Knight and, and Wonder Woman. I as want, games. Yeah, as games. As like an RPG experience. Yeah. Nice. Yes. If I could, if I could do a, a Wonder Woman as an RPG experience would be fucking I rad. I want that so bad. It'd be so rad. And hypothetically, a conversation happened at E3 this year where they're like, you know, we think you could do a Wonder Woman RPG, and like, holy fuck. That was Dude, like, get Jennifer Hale in there doing the voice on that, and we're solid. It would be so we're fun. Fucking solid. That'd be so great. Yes. Okay. Real uh, fast, uh, Testament Doom wants to know who is Mitch. This guy. Not this is Mitch. Mitch. What else do you need to know? Look it up. You're on the internet. But that's the thing. It's like he's just going to type in Mitch on Google. And that's, that's good enough. <laughs> Wait, I have no idea what happens when you type in just Mitch on Google. Probably, probably not you. Uh, let's hope. Mm. Mm -hmm. I mean, when I when I googled you, the first thing I found was that article about uh, Shadowrun on Xbox 360. That's the first thing that came up. The what? The one. The that one says, that quotes Emily. Yeah, Daddy, why does the internet hate you? Yeah, uh, that was my first experience. Where I was like, Oh, Mitch Kittleman, let me look that up. Oh, okay, cool, cool, cool. I like that game. Oh, other people did not like that game and had things to say about it. That may be true. This... Dude, it just came. It it just like what the fuck. Can we, okay, we haven't had a chance to talk about this, and I've been wanting to talk to you about it for a while. You're making my palms sweat. Okay, for those it's that honesty don't know, hour. For those that don't know, Shadowrun, um, for the Xbox 360, which is like one of the first multiplayer only experience. Basically, you can Team think, multiplayer, yeah. you can mm -hmm. thank that game for Destiny existing. Because honest to God, Destiny wouldn't exist without it. Same design team. Yeah, it just- Same design team. That, what they learned on that, Guess what? It's in Destiny. The core sandbox designers, yeah. Yeah. I yeah. mean, a lot of the weapon designs and stuff, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. all in the powers and other things like that. Yeah. Um, they just released it on Xbox One in the store. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They, they Are any of the servers are online? I am told that you can play cross-platform. I'm told that... What do you, you mean cross-platform? You can play Xbox against PC. Right now. 
That's what the lead program manager tweeted at me and said, yes, you can. Has anyone tried this? Because I have not seen anyone try. Is there anyone fucking playing the game? Is there, did they just release this and they're like, oh yeah, there's servers online and nobody's playing. So actually it doesn't matter. Like, I don't. I know that I was invited to uh, a tournament in January and I'm going in uh, LA. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, they play Hold Team on. Fortress 2. Halo 2 and Shadowrun. And these are Major League Gamer people that uh, just keep, you know, that have just kept it going uh, <laughs> 10 years. Yeah. Uh, that hurt right there. Just the whole 10 years thing. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, there's, there's someone playing it right now on Twitch. Is that right? Oh. Oh. Fuck. That's my ass. <laughs> You should have said trigger warning. <laughs> I worked. I don't believe. Dude, but I've... look how many people are watching. I can't. I'm not wearing my glasses. It's, it know. says eight. Oh, it says eight. <laughs> it does say eight. Well, yes, and yes, and there are very happy eight people. The. Uh, I mean, nobody said anything. This no. was uh, the single hardest thing I've ever done it in looks, my long, it long looks, career. It looks good for a port over. Dude, I'd play that shit. It's, I know Ricky wants to play the hell no, it sounds, out of I, I find it really fun. I think it's a great team-based yeah. base shooter. It's one of those team-based shooters where you've got to coordinate. You, know, you can't just run and gun. You'll just get your ass handed to you. Mm -hmm. But I love that game. I love the team that made that. Uh, it's not Shadowrun, but it's a fun game. Yeah. But yeah, that's the hardest thing I've ever done. That's the hardest, That's the worst part of my entire life. It always cracks and me up. And the best part of my Every time I see time. the videos, it's like so many things were taken directly to Destiny. So many. So many. But, yeah. you know. Um, and just for all the people watching who don't know, um, Mitch here runs Hairbrain Schemes. Um, he's also the new executive producer of Hyper RPG Seattle Branch. Right. So, True. Uh, and you've made a lot of games. A lot of games. Over the years. Yes. For. Um, Yourself, Microsoft, um... Sony. I, I, my very first game was a Sony PlayStation One first wave title, and I, pl I touched the Sony PlayStation, touched it before it was even announced, and it was like eight, eight. It was a rack of eight PCs on top of each other. No shit. Right, running Wipeout in, um, in uh, uh, where are the Beatles from? Help me out. Liverpool? Yeah, Liverpool. Okay. I was in Liverpool. And that's where Wipeout. You know Wipeout? I fucking love yeah. Wipeout. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I insulted that team like a motherfucker, too. Oh, it was cool. awesome. Great. Yeah, because we're out there in uh, Liverpool, and I was working on this really advanced RPG with amazing AI. And uh, and I saw Wipeout. I'm just like, so wait, you just go around the track? That's it? And the team's like, really? Like, yeah. you know, it's more than Did just that. Did you say all this before you even played the game? Oh yeah, that's a super <laughs> dick move. I've just, really, just, I've just, really mellowed in my old age. <laughs> just walking in and be like, I don't want to see what you have, but let me tell you how it's a really bad idea. No, I saw it. I just didn't play it. Just mm. like really, so you just sort of go around in a circle. Like this is the this is next generation gaming. You go around in a circle. I love that game. It was great. I regret saying that. that was I was fun. dead wrong. It was a beautiful game. Great team. Really nice people. I apologize profusely, but not for months later. Mascot stories. Oh, you mean like the uh, purple Crayola bear? Yeah, that's a different job. <laughs> but I got uh, all the Burger King I could eat on that job, so I feel feel real good about that. The Angelus was born in Liverpool. So uh, Morta Steel asks if they can have an embarrassing daughter story. Uh, about the uh, daughter that, because I've got two daughters, so That's I, true. Could, I could wax poetic about both of them. They're, <laughs> they're embarrassing people. And for those that don't know, Emily, our community manager, is Mitch's daughter. Surprise! Crazy talk. You yeah. can tell by her beard. The um, embarrassing daughter story, uh, Emily once grounded herself. Okay. There you go. She grounded she, herself. Out of guilt? She broke curfew. <laughs> and... She was so mortified. She was at uh, Dick's Drive-In, you know, uh -huh. getting burgers with her friends, and she was late. And so she was so mortified. She brought me fries, put her immediately went to bed, and then uh, then uh, grounded herself for a month. 
You did good. <laughs> I don't know. Have you seen it? Are you fucking kidding me? Yeah, something she, went wrong She there. does harbor a lot of internal violence towards me. Then people, I so. started drinking. Uh, right, and when did Shadowrun come out? Then I started drinking. <laughs> there is no overlap at all between these things. <laughs> that is factually true. Keep going. <laughs> oh, this is Honesty Hour, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Darkest times ever. Alien Knitter says, Mitch, Zach used to run a show that I forgot the name of. Something about memories and being wiped. Anyway, it was about game development failures. What do you consider the worst game you ever made? And if you could redo it, how would you make it not suck? That's interesting. The worst game... There's a big difference between the worst financial failure and mm, the worst game I've ever made. Definitely. Because just because a game doesn't sell well doesn't mean that it wasn't a good game. Yeah. For oh, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It could just been marketed poorly. Yeah. Or, you know, we had one game come out and... Somebody else, a major, I won't tell you which game or anything, but there was a major game that decided to slip their date at the very last minute to the same day as us and just left a crater around us. Oh, and that's shit. just, and that's just the, the luck of the draw. Hey! Money. On tonight's menu, I ate two chimichangas, two chili dogs, and one quart of chocolate milk. Also, Shadow Run for 360 is the best game ever. I will bleed you out. Come at me, bro. I'm bleeding out, yeah. <laughs> Resurrection station floor. Anyway. Yeah, where were we? Oh, we're, failures. We're, failure. Yeah, good what? times. Thanks. No, let's stay on failures. That's, uh, <laughs> Why would we want to talk about I successes? have a story. Congratulations career. on becoming the new executive producer of Hyper RPG Seattle branch. Let's, let's talk, talk about, about why failures. you suck. Yeah. <laughs> uh, my biggest. So, the game, the worst game I've done. I made a game for Amway. For who? Amway. Don't you familiar know. with no, them? No. That um, Amway. Uh, yeah. Somebody's saying, "What the fuck?" It's true. I made a game for Amway. Uh, Amway is like they come to your house and try and sell you. Money. Need to tip for Mitch being there. Massive respect for doing the Battle Tech game, and for rocking that eye patch on Hash DFA. Thank you, Kermin Day. Thank you for that. Okay, continue. Continue. Uh. So this is a game that they, these um, these are kind of like door-to-door -door salesmen, mm -hmm. but it's also a pure. Uh, yeah. It's a. It, it's it, a sales model. There's a sales model. There's a sales model. Ponzi. So the. Uh, <laughs> and um, anyway, they decided that a lot of their audience were homeschoolers, and so they wanted to make uh, a game uh, a game for kid for kids. Home school and they would sell this sort of door to door. And uh, when I said, okay, uh, the game, here's the pitch. It's called Math Metropolis, right? And the entire city is made out of ge geometric figures and it's all the, you know, math symbols and everything. It's anyway. And uh, I said, and in the center of Math Metropolis, okay. there's a statue to the very first math symbol. And it's a caveman with two bones and it says one and one, two. And they said, we can't do that because, and I said, why? Well, that presupposes evolution. I said, oh shit. Yes. <laughs> but I'm like, our, our audience, the, the, no, no. It's like, no problem. So here's, you know, and then I had to change the pitch right there. That, wait, what? Wait, what? I loved that game. Snaps Math a, Parade? It was part of a Ponzi scheme? I can't say for sure. You're ruining everything. <laughs> <laughs> you ruined because of you! I learned it from you, Dad! <laughs> anyway, so that was perhaps the very worst game I ever made. Sweet. Emily, your favorite thing was a lie. Uh, and yeah. then <laughs> Xir right after that says... As is my love. Go ahead. <laughs> Xir says, if the answer to the previous question wasn't the Shadowrun shooter, then why not? <laughs> because it's an awesome game and F you. I think Ricky will back you up on that. There it is. Ricky now, will I will that. say, it is not a Shadowrun game. It was a it was a terrible excuse for it's a Shadowrun game. It's predestiny, bro. It was disrespectful to the Shadowrun audience and the 20 years of Shadowrun and all of that. And I've apologized for it and I've been sincere, but it's a great game. So really, it's just needed to be called... Uh, me and the marketing department had like, it out it on that one. It could have been like Shadow Poopers. And it would have probably been better. You could have <laughs> even done Shadowrun colon Team Fortress. You yeah, know, anything. And the reviews on that 
sucked my ass, and that was a quote that I said on PC Gamer podcast, by the way, and on Major Nelson's podcast. <laughs> He's like, what do I you remember think? that one too. Yeah. Uh, I don't know where I'm going with that. Yeah. So I'm, I'm lost in 2007. Pull me back. Pull me All right. Back. More to Steel yeah. asks, do you think the games industry is or may suffer from focusing too much on short-term sales, meaning first two weeks, rather than judging success from sales over a longer period? Uh, welcome to the nature of the business right now. The, the, the video game business, it, this is the very best time ever in the video game business for game creators and for players, right? Because... Anybody can make a game now. The, mm -hmm. the tools are super cheap. You can get on these platforms. You can get on, you know, uh, the phones. You can get on uh, Steam, right? Anybody can make a game. And that is a glorious and beautiful thing because it unlocks creativity and it fosters competition. Yay. And anybody can make a game. And so, I don't know if you know this about Steam, 40% of the games on Steam right now Maybe showed this up year, this right? year. Yeah. Okay. Holy dog shit. So the competition is ridiculous, and it's developers aren't focusing on the first two weeks. That's just what it is, right? And everybody, you know, you go to Steam, you go, mm, if you're not a fan, and I want this right now. It's kind of like the Twitch front page. If it's not sitting at that, like, popular new game, oh, yeah. or on that front slider. Yeah, we call that merchandising, how right? Do you, how do you know yeah. where it is? So if you're not on an end cap in the store, right some way then you're lost so how do you get to that end cap yeah. or how do you get on the front page and that's hell and then not only that once upon a time so when i when i got into video games they were in these boxes right and the boxes would disappear from the stores eventually and other things would come in and peers thank you for that follow Rah. and so what would happen was uh you know stores would rotate their stock and so another game would come in. Well, now a digital game is there forever. And so your choices are unlimited and forever and everybody just waits for sales, like the Steam sale that may mm -hmm. be coming up very soon. And then you buy about 10 of them, and, you know, so it's hell. It's hell, it's great, and it's horrible. It's the, the best of time, times, yeah. it was the worst of times. Uh, I hope this is stuff you care about. Mitch. Uh -oh. How many sales are you up to, and when does AJ get his car? Who asked that? Lee Anderson. All right. AJ, that's private. What happens? Oh, it's been announced on the channel. It's been discussed. Is it really? A lot of people know about this deal. I wonder where AJ's going to work next week. <laughs> so, so now you're giving, you're threatening him with a, like... You're just, I don't have to give him the car. So to back that. out of a deal you made, you're threatening just firing the person you made the deal with to avoid having to, to pay up? Welcome to the power, motherfucker. That's me. No, the uh, so the answer is... So how many sales are you up to? <laughs> we'll just call it probably enough. I'm a little late with my payments. <laughs> did, did he say what car I promised to buy him? Yeah, he did. Mm, suicide doors and everything, it's gonna be great. So, tell you what, AJ, show me a driver's license and we'll talk. Wait, does he not have a driver's license? He doesn't license? have a driver's license. Oh, he got you on that one. I'm looking uh, at you. You're looking at me right now, Aldrin. I'm looking in my eyes. If you get a license, then we'll talk. Yeah. Uh, hmm. I like this. The plot has thickened. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, Arizona Clone 860 asks once again, you've adamantly stated that your wife will not be appearing on the channel. Stage fright, question mark. Um, wants to remain a mysterious force of Gidomania, question mark. Will you tell us more about this obviously incredible woman? Um, uh, the problem with talking about uh, Emily's mother is that I will get saccharine real fast. So we got to stay, you know, real high level or else I'll start waxing poetic and crying. So she's very, very cool. She's also a community manager. She's the community manager of Hairbrain Schemes. Uh, on the forums, you might know her as Dagger because she was a mech warrior in Mech Commander 2. Right. Um, and, uh, hmm, she uh, is not a public figure. And that's just that. She is a behind the scenes person. She is not afraid of anything. She ain't afraid of you, I'll tell you what. But she's not an on-camera personality. There you have it. But you can hear her voice if you go to Mech Commander 2. Go to YouTube, Mech Commander 2, right? The sounds of whatever, and go to Dagger. You'll hear uh, my wife's voice. 
So, Pooh Brain... Am I keeping you awake here, Sport? What's the story? I'm just reading your questions, man. Right. I'm pretty fucking tired, I'm not gonna lie. It's, right. been a, it's been a long week. We've been packing. This. Well, you guys can't see because we <laughs> kept the studio this nice and clean. Hell. The entire front half is just boxes and stuff and cables and... I'm fucking exhausted. All right. Uh, Pooh Brain Glue Eater wants to know, Mitch, will you be giving Zach a Christmas hug? Zach, will you be giving Mitch a Christmas hug? I'm gonna let you go first on that one. I don't. I don't need. I gave to... you a kiss the other day. Yeah, you did. Uh, yeah, you that's the next question. More. Um, come on, bring it. Let's this go. is about as much affection as I'm comfortable giving. And yeah, there, there we go. There's your Christmas. I mean, you. you yeah, wait, you, wait. You, blow it up. Come on. Uh, I don't really celebrate Christmas. You don't really celebrate Christmas. I'm a either. Jew. So, <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> not so much. Whack is it? Whack it is in. Whack it is in. What's up? What citizen? That's probably it. Washington citizen, probably. I hope so. Uh, thanks for the follow. Okay. Um, and then Ice Hulk asks, how does Malika feel about you getting kissed by other people in the air? She probably thinks it's hilarious. Alienator, uh, Mitch, how does Turn your. On. What? How does your wife feel about you kissing other people on Turn here? On. Uh, Mitch, how does your daughter feel about you kissing people on here? <laughs> yeah, you had Next to... question. <laughs> now, Mitch, how do you Wait, really... Wait, I just want to point out, my daughter is embarrassed every time I come on camera. Yes. And that's just that. And she, like, you know that her gut tenses up every time I'm in front of the camera, like, what's he going to do? Mm -hmm. And the answer is, whatever the fuck I want. Uh, Mitch, for those of us aspiring game devs, indie or not... Any words of advice you can offer? Yeah, I do. Uh, make stuff. Don't wait for permission. Don't wait for the greatest idea in the world. Make, 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 make. Right? That's the way to do it. Your resume isn't going to get you too far in the door if you're trying to get a job from a, you know, a company that's already established. Uh, and so I like to see audition pieces, especially for designers. It's really hard to get a job as a designer because you you're just going to talk, you know, artists walk in with a portfolio, engineers can show pieces of code. Mm -hmm. So uh, my suggestion actually, at least for if you're a designer, get the Shadowrun uh, Hong Kong editor and make something with that and, and give that uh, as an audition piece. Um, other things, uh, man, you better have a monetization plan for whatever your game is. You got to know how you're going to make money with that thing. And that sucks. When I got into game industry, I just wanted to tell stories and do yeah. cool shit. And now I have to be an economist and a marketer and it, uh, yeah. your skill set has to grow. And it same. Blows. I mean, it's the same with media right now, too. You can't, yeah. you can't approach any media without trying to fill it. No, you can't gap. swing a dead cat without content. You know what I Potter mean? It's 72. everywhere. Thank you for the follow. Uh, Mal wants to know, Mitch, how much would someone need to tip the channel to get you to play Shadowrun on the studio's Xbox One? Money. Mitch, a kick rhyme for you. Love the Shadow Runs, Necropolis 2. Hyped for a mech in Battletech. Much love for the harebrained crew. Hashtag Thumper Pride. Uh, much love to for the uh, the Battletech crew. They're they're kicking ass and they're really really focused. Yeah, and they're I doing saw, really uh, good work. I saw a lot of uh, press in the last week after your Kickstarter update with the, the yeah. melee combat and all that good yeah. stuff. <laughs> mech on mech love. It's good. It's fun. You got to hear it with sound too. It's it's very satisfying. Lots of crunch. Yeah, there's some there's some crunch. It's good. It's like, yeah. So, uh, getting back to the question. What was the question again? <laughs> How much would someone have to tip to the channel to get you to play Shadowrun? Uh, I'm gonna let you set the price, but I just warn you. Oh, don't, don't let, okay, if you tell me to set the price. Who's the, oh yeah, okay, I'm I gonna it. put it really fucking low. As, it, as it the executive like gonna... <laughs> producer of the Seattle studio, let me say that needs to be 2,000 American dollars. <laughs> 2,000 American dollars. Such a piece of shit. $2,000? Where's the thanks for the revenue, Biznatch? Come no, on. No, that's not. No, see, there's called overshooting. Huh? When you set something it's a too, community unlock. When you set something too high, it doesn't... They don't... They can't... That's like asking too much. You've reached too high. That's, don't give that's me... Not, that's not, that's not helping with right. revenue. That's giving explain. them the ceiling that's so high that they're like, fuck that. I that did not come asshole. on this show to be berated by a little man. 
Here's the deal. No. I suck at that game. Here's the truth. First of all, it's a team-based shooter, so I could play against bots right on the show. I could do that. But it's a team-based shooter. I need my team. You think Ricky isn't ready to throw down? Oh, Ricky, that makes Ricky's sense. Ricky's in there to throw down. All right, Ricky. No, Ricky Ricky can be on the team. I'm picturing you as a cyber. Money. $10 towards that 2,000 goal. Thank you, Mitch. $1,990 to go. This shit's working. Why are you? Why? Why do you step to me? Right. <laughs> One of us is a business way too genius. High. Huh? Yeah. Wait. Who is shorter again? <laughs> Ask Silly Sunny. Uh, how tall are you? I'm like five eleven. Are you really? Yeah. Oh fuck. You're way tall. <laughs> the answer is always the other person. The other person. But this is a true story. I I swear on Emily's head, on all three of my children's head. I had no earthly idea how small I was up until about uh, 10 years ago. I did not know. Uh, it was about 10 years after I moved to Seattle and I was walking down the street with my friends. One is 6'7", one is 6'6", six, six, and one is 6'5". Right? That's very huge. They're, I got tree trunks for, for friends, right? And I'm walking, I'm like, I can't see past you guys, you're so tall. They're like, you realize how small you are. I'm not small, but, uh, you're tall. <laughs> Another twenty dollars towards that two thousand dollars goal. No, it, no, they won't get it. You're all you're doing is creating a false hope. We'll get like a thousand away probably, and then everyone's gonna feel bad because they couldn't hit. I'm the goal. sorry, I couldn't hear you through okay. the finger. This is the best show ever. Just take it from someone who's done this for a while. Thank, oh time. yeah, no, I understand. You're a professional. I'm yeah. I'm just a you're talented just... amateur. <laughs> Uh, next question, Mitch, which kid is your favorite and why is it Emily? Excellent question. Money. I just woke up. Have a tenor towards the Mitch fund. Thank you, Eleanor Rose. Eleanor Rose. Uh, Emily is, has genetically followed me in a couple of ways that I wish didn't happen, but <laughs> what are you, you going to do? She's a little intense. Yeah, thanks to you, she stays here until 11 p.m. at night. Um, and even when I say go home, she's like, I'm doing stuff. Yeah. So I learned it from fault. you, Dad! That's your fault. Yeah, it sure is. Yeah. Oh, well. Money. Throwing $5 to get that done. This will be so much fun. Let's hit the goal and pay it in full. Let's get Mitch on that shadow run. Hashtag Thumper Pride. So just for the record, my build will be Elf with glider, uh, what is that? Able to see through the wall. Money. And 20 more towards that impossible goal. It's impossible, it can't be done. Can't be done. God, you have little faith. 19.35 to go, what time is it right now? 10.30, man. 10.30. Okay. This is honestly hour, right? It's only on for an hour. It never goes yeah, over. Yeah, that's it. Right? Mitch, right. how do you keep Jordan's famously off-the-wall ideas in check and help hone them into cohesive games? So this will be this in is... my book. <laughs> <laughs> who wrote that? Uh, e. Somebody... Lackey wrote it. So somebody that knows Jordan well. Who? 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 E. Lackey. He works. Uh, he's local. He works for PAX and a lot of other local. Oh. oh, oh. Money. Hashtag goals. Thank you, Empty Knots. <laughs> You're gonna learn something, boy. Uh-huh. Uh, the, uh, when we get to 2000, I'm down in that, so let's roll. Okay, do we have Shuttle Run here? Could I play it tonight, right now? If we hit the 2000, so we could just pay this off right now? No, that's not how to do this. Yeah, teach me more I'm about sure how to that do this. goal will never be reached. Kappa. You're coming to the party tomorrow, right? Money. Ten dollars to watch Zach face palm again. Does he realize what he started here? Don't tell us what we can't do. Hashtag lock. Hashtag shadow run for much. Money. Another ten dollars towards that two thousand dollars goal. Glad to have you here, Mitch. You're awesome. I'll make sure not to step on your toes. Hashtag thumper to your hashtag clip steam hashtag as technology. So uh, they love you so much. They're all chipping in to get you to have a high blood pressure triggered attack. 
Just adding $5 to that 2K goal hashtag shadow run. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, that's so right. We're not going to get any questions. Yeah, okay. 5'11, um, uh, but so, such a little man. I'm so. sorry, we're working. I can't hear you. Money. Tips coming Challenged in. accepted. <laughs> also, Allie. That was AJ. Uh, uh, AJ loves you. A-L-Y -A is AJ loves you. So. What I'm saying is you're coming to the party tomorrow, right? Uh, the only party. I gotta check my calendar. You I don't can have wear what you're wearing right now. Good. This is my only sweater. Yeah. <laughs> you know, video game developers should be making a lot of money, especially when they're over 50. But this is my only sweater that I actually so own. So what's what? You don't just do this at the end of the night as a as a one-off whatever. We make it a part of the event tomorrow when everyone's here to berate. Oh, I see fun. where we're going. I see. Right. That's how you you build it up. Let everyone tweet out that you're gonna do it. Let everyone on the internet know that the guy who oh you want to promote the game, that the guy who created the game. Money. I'm gonna All right, tell you what. Hashtag shadow yeah. run. It's gotta happen now. Wow, a hundred bones. Thank, thank you. Very you. Much. Thank All right, I tell you what. If we can get this, and I'm very very serious now, and thank you for the lesson, mentor. I will uh, attempt to bring in members of the Shadowrun team, the original Shadowrun team, to play it with me. Because it's a team-based shooter. Because you want them to be as upset as you are? You if look? they're talking to me anymore. <laughs> That's a longer story. But yeah, anyway. So you're just going to hit up Bungie and be like, hey guys. Uh, there are some on 343 on hit. Oh, that's right. The, my team was divided into Destiny and Halo 4. Money. Sorry, I was late. $25 for whatever is wrong with Mitch. Hashtag shadow run hashtag neonet. You're not late. Okay. You're not late. Well, I can stay up for this shit. Let's get back to questions. Yeah, please. Uh, More about my failures. Keep going with that. Wow. Davlin wants to know if Honesty Hour is staying. And one way or another, Davlin, Honesty Hour will always be a part of this channel because updating you guys on all the things going on. Uh, what our plans are, making you a part of everything that's going on on the business end of things will always be a part of the channel, so uh, don't worry about that. Honesty Hour, or however we frame it, will always be around. We're always going to be addressing you directly on what's going on, and uh, that will always be here. Well, well, there's like, oh, the failed Shadowrun game. We want to just make sure you get that out there. Money. Just want to say QQ and Emily are awesome. Also, hashtag Shadowrun. Okay. And QQ and Emily are awesome. Oh, Alienator added it to the DFA store so you can see the remaining amount <laughs> and donate automatically. <laughs> so he made it easy for you. Say what? Money. Hashtag Neonet donates for hashtag Shadow Run. I do whatever I want, Mitch 2016. It's true. By the way, that that's a very serious thing. That is absolutely my life goal. Or the way I live my life. This is a very important thing to me. What, what is? I do whatever the fuck I want. Okay. I just want to get that out. Okay. No, I've, I know this. I know. You've but also it, said it. I mean, you've said it like twice tonight. I, well, it seems important. like you're kind of driving. It sounds like you're trying to convince yourself more than you're trying to convince them. Nope. <laughs> okay. Keep going. All right. Cool. 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 Anyway, where are we? Uh, Bob wants to know if there's an empty room at Penny Arcade where you was set up in the current HRPG style or use the already set up room at Penny Arcade. It's kind of a mix of both. Yeah. Uh, they have a studio they're using to Twitch stream from right now, but there's a lot more to that room you can't see. Yeah. So we're going to be putting their control bay in a closet and opening up that entire room to set up an RPG style using their set design and, and all that kind of stuff and throwing up some of our posters and merging together in a fun way. It'll be cool. The other thing is it's really good for the cast of our shows because it's a really nice facility. Money. Thanks, Mitch, for hanging out with us tonight. It's great having you as part of the channel. Zach, nice work getting the expansion pack together. Merry fracking Christmas. Thank you, White Wabbit. Thanks that a lot, That was the White nicest Wabbit. thing, White Wabbit. I, I was waiting for the snark. I know, yeah. Because <laughs> nobody has ever, like, shut me up like White Rabbit. So well done. Don't, don't, don't. Yeah. You just, you just. It's all right. No, don't. Because, no, I, props. That's all I'm saying. Damn it, Mitch. Props. Screw it. Okay. Uh, where were we? You oh, so, the, the so that's, oh, did you hear about that? Yeah, I did. <laughs> You've been talking to Emily. You know my dad no, repeats no, I, himself I, a lot. Yeah. 
Yeah, you got that for yourself. But anyway, it's great for the cast too. Like there's a shower there, there's a locker room there, uh, there's a kitchen where people can hang out, there are couches. So we're, you're not constantly hearing people off screen talking and stuff. So there, there's a lot of really great advantages for the cast as well. Yeah. Um, to Hoods wants to know if Malika can have a cooking show. Please, like cooking with Malika. Um, Ooh. Malika wants to do a cooking show. I'm gonna have to convince her to do it on Twitch because she has an idea for like a like filmed cooking show that she wants to pitch to oh, Tasty wow. uh, or Tastemate or Taste Tasty, right? Tastemate. I'm sorry, I'll show you at me later. Um, but I would love to have Malika cooking on the channel. Every, I mean, I, I think we should do a, like every morning cooking show with Malika, like right around 10 a.m. You know, when it's time to eat breakfast. I think that would be a really great show. You seem sincere. I'm very sincere because my favorite time was when we were doing those social eating streams almost every night and Malika was cooking in the studio every night and I was here and I was eating amazing meals. It was, it was Ooh, so look good. at that. That's good, right? Yeah, hell yeah. That's right. Hashtag uh, charity, yay. Yeah, there's a current thing going on where people, uh, Twitch will match bits that are given. Really? They use hashtag charity when they do it. Oh, badass. Yeah, it matches the bits. They're giving, they give us the bits and then they match the bits. <laughs> Money. Another twenty-five dollars without a bad joke. Glad to have more Mitch on the channel. Oh. Hashtag shadow run. Hashtag neonet. Uh -huh. Kato Isaac says expansion pack hype. Hype. Um, Eternal Knight wants to know if I'm still GMing Vanquished. Yes. When we are ready to release um, Vanquished season two, I will be GMing. It just might be towards the end of our rollout of new shows because um, there's a lot to do to get everything ready, and I don't want to stretch myself too thin and not give other shows proper attention they need. So, it might be Money. Hashtag shadow run hashtag goals that will never breach Kappa. <laughs> Sweet. Okay. Um, Mitch, is your title at Hyper actually Lord Commander? Also, does HR Bunny outrank the LC? Wow. HR, Bun HR Bunny really needs to outrank the Ace LC in a big way. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. Uh, LC needs to be uh, controlled. That's for sure. Bad night, bad night. Uh, what else was that? Um, what, what's your title at Hyper? Uh, is your title at Hyper actually Lord Commander? It is not. It is Executive Producer. On Death Realm Above, I play a character called the Lord Commander. I'm actually not. Money. So, adding in for the unattainable goal of hashtag shadow run for Mitch hashtag Ren Raku hash Seder dash Krupp can. We get a counter for the unattainable goal. Uh, I don't think anyone's here to do that, unfortunately. So, because EPLC, I think yeah. that, that's what we're going for. Yeah. Uh, EPLC. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. Okay, so. This is a weird question. Um, we saw Strix hiding her drink on DFA. I'm wondering why that is, and if Hyper RPG is trying to be more family friendly with the expansion. Yeah. We said holy shit like 30 times in that expansion. <laughs> well, for my family, that's friendly. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know how anyone would think. We talked about a shit bucket too. Like, I'm... <laughs> I think it's just that Strix wasn't trying. Corafi isn't a drinker. Right. I think that's really what it is. I think she Strix was, was drinking, but oh, she yeah. didn't want it to look oh. like Corafi was drinking. Just for the record, all of the Marauders pounded throughout the show. <laughs> <laughs> so that's my influence, and I'm really proud of that. We stay loose. The Marauders are loose. No guts, no galaxy, baby. Okay, this is a good question Darth Mullen uh, asks, mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm glad to break it into it. Um, uh, guys, morning content. I feel mm. like this West Coast premiere prime time only is missing the boat. There's Central Time, East Coast, UK, Australia. I personally watch streams with 200 streamers in your off hours, even if it's talking heads, visual podcast type shows, because money, yo, everything doesn't have to be big. Smaller shows where people just talk and answer questions and goof around give content a more mm -hmm. homey feel. Plus, it gets people coming around more. Constantly citing your research but never actually running morning content is kind of off-putting. Obviously that last line is purely my opinion, but the long diatribe is more objective. Um, so what I can tell you is, I understand you want more morning content, but we are not big enough 
to get high enough numbers for it to pay for itself. I know you think that we do, or we could, but we actually know we couldn't because of the research and because of what we've done. And I mean, it's our afternoon shows only pulling around 120 people on average and they don't pay for themselves. They lost us throughout the course of the year a lot of money. And I know you're saying that our bigger shows shouldn't always be big, but honestly, we're at a position where go big or go home. Now, these kinds of things, us sitting here and talking to you, will never go away. Us doing streams with the community will never go away. That's always gonna be there. But having these shows, the thing is those shows cost money. We live in a world where having people come out to do things, if you respect them and you respect their time, you pay them. And we respect them and we respect their time. Now, some shows you probably watch in the mornings that get lower numbers, like 200, stuff like that. If we were a stream that was filming out of somebody's apartment and we were Skyping in some of our friends and it was a no bullshit or just like kind of like a whatever kind of thing, that can work for some people. But we have overhead, lots of it. We have people's health insurance to pay. We have bills to pay, lights to keep on. It's expensive. And that is unfortunately the nature of our business is we have to look at the end of the day on how much we're losing versus how much we're bringing in. We'll always have stuff like this though, always. We just have to adapt it to what keeps us from losing too much. You'll see Malika playing games in the afternoon still. You'll see Lucas and I playing games with the community. You'll see us doing some stuff in the mornings too at 11 a.m. It's on our schedule right now and we talked about that in our, uh, in our release, but it will be the crew because then it's part of salary and it's not us having to pay extra people that we can't afford the budget for. So it's just one of those unfortunate things that that's just the fucking way it is. I wish there was another way around it, but we've done this for a year now and we've now got the data to really see like, okay, we can't keep doing this. Because mm -hmm. Is this one of those can't. things where that's the answer is for now and in success all things oh, are possible? Oh, in success all things are always possible. Okay. You know, if we get large enough and we have a large enough audience, then enough people will then come over to watch the smaller shows. Yeah. Right now when we do smaller shows and there's only 120 people watching, we can't sustain that. We just can't. Mm -hmm. It's unfortunate, but we just can't. Um, and that may be hard for you guys to hear. It's harder for us because we put time and effort and work and resource and production into our small shows, some of them just as much as our big yeah. ones. Some of our bigger shows are actually easier to put on because there's so much production that happens in the moment. Um, some like RPG shows, the story's being written as it happens. So there's even less pre-production work. Mm -hmm. uh, especially at the beginning of the year, some of our shows you know, like Rabbit Stew is a great example. Yeah. That was a lot of time for our mods, for the people on it doing research for pre-production and getting everything ready every day. And it lost us a lot of money because time is money, uh, unfortunately. So I wish it was just a super easy answer of like, oh yeah, we'll just do some morning shows because there's a lot of people that want to watch them, but there's not. Not enough right now. Uh, not enough right now to keep it sustained. In the future, maybe we can. Uh, we just gotta get higher numbers up. Um, and I think that puts off some some people. I've seen other people on Reddit say stuff too about yeah. like, oh, you know, they're making these decisions because of money. And it's like, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. That's unfortunately the way the world works. Say what? Money. To but dream the do. impossible dream. To fight the unbeatable foe. To bear with unbearable sorrow. To run where the brave dare not go. Hashtag shadow run. This is my quest. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but yeah, all things are possible in success. And uh, we are going to be doing some stuff at 11 a.m., which is earlier than we've ever done it. Um, but yeah. And I know it sucks. It's like people get mad sometimes when we say... Yeah. Um, that we have to make decisions, have to make based, decisions on money. based on money. But <laughs> the thing is, us telling you where that money is going is what we hope makes you feel like it's not that. Uh, and it's because, the same thing in game development, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, like you're trying to make something for the fans and keep them happy for a community, but at the same time, you have to look all the people that make that game in the eye and say, hey, I got you. You know, like... I gotta make payroll. Yeah, payroll. Right? I got bills to pay. I got mouths to feed. Yeah. <laughs> and that's the truth. Yeah. Say what? Money. Hashtag goals. Hashtag Mary Thumpermas. <laughs> Mary Thumpermas. <laughs> uh, and it is an unfortunate thing because... You know, we pay very close attention to how we're doing each month, month, how things are coming in. And we're the type of people that when more money comes in, 
unfortunately for some of the other people involved in the company, we go, ooh, what cool thing can we do now? As opposed to giving raises? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're like, now we can do something bigger and cooler. Yeah. Uh, because ultimately, we just want to make really awesome content. Uh, we want to make that's cool stuff. Goal. That's what we really want to do. That's Mitch's goal. That's my goal. That's Ryan's goal. That's Emily's goal. We want to make much really, my only goal. Yes, yeah, to make really awesome shit. Money. Here's ten dollars on behalf of Simder's evil browsers. Hashtag shadow run hashtag hash browns. Money. For the impossible hashtag shadow run goal or Mitch's cigar fund. Mitch's cigar fund. It's funny, Zach and I just went to the cigar yeah, store you, before you, we came here. Uh, you went, I walked with you. Yes. Let's be clear there. Yeah. Um all right. So, Mitch, Crimson yes. Skies win. Hmm. No date, no even promises, but I'm actually working on it. We're working on it. Not Crimson Skies. I'm getting the rights to Crimson mm. Skies. And no movement, but uh, we will keep uh, pushing because I want to make Crimson Skies. That's how Jordan and I really started working together, was on Crimson Skies. I was the original lead designer and producer of that. Uh, back when, God, I don't know, before Mech Commander. That's how long ago we started working on that. Before that, we were working on the Battletech pods. Yeah. Anyway, so I want Crimson Skies. I do. I love Pulp. I love two-fisted 1930s, 40s adventure. Right. You know, and uh, Adventure in the Sky. Indiana Jones. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But all those Republic serials from way back, you know, the whole with the cliffhangers and stuff. I love that stuff. Um. Thanks, Firecrow. Oh God, there was like a question I saw float up in the chat and I was yeah. like, oh, I want to talk about that. And then I totally lost track uh, of it. I'll remember it later. <laughs> um, Blackbird says, Zach, you said you Valiant wants to hopefully give you some cast members for season two of Vanquish. And you also said that the actress that plays Livewire intimidates you. Do you think you'd have a park if you had to jam her? Oh, I'd be fine. I played that up. Uh, uh, the goal is for him to sit this rock. Money. Hi y'all, how are you? My family's not feeling well, but they're getting better too. I love Zach and Mitch, compassion for their chars. Hopefully the ship won't crash into Mars. I love your PBLS and I love what I see. So PBL follow and even subscribe to hashtag Shad. Awesome, Bad thank ass. you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Um, so the goal is, uh, Valiant wants to send us for season two a lot of guest appearances to have people on their shows appear and uh, as their characters. And I talked to a lot of them at New York City Comic Con about that. Um, so hopefully we'll be able to work that out in the new year. Um, Spatha08 says, Zach, please tell us we'll see Keller, Amy, and Whitney on Hyper South. Uh, well, on Hyper. Most the studio. likely. Yeah. Most likely. I can't confirm 100% yes or no. I mean, you're gonna see them. Yeah. Whether or not they're official cast members on uh, certain shows, that is still being decided. Uh, and I would also like to hammer home, and I got, I yelled at Lucas for this, it's not Hyper South, it's just Hyper RPG. Right. It's all one. One. All just Hyper we RPG. one. Um, let's see. Chaotic Looney says he remembers playing, uh, or he or she, sorry, remembers playing Mech Commander at Gen Con the year they went, and that was great. That was... That was cool. It's it's really rough bringing a BattleTech game to Gen Con and showing it to the BattleTech crowd. Mm -hmm. Like that'll make you sweat through the anus. Said that wrong, right? Yeah, a little bit. Uh, Kaltora wants to know what the short-term subscriber goal for the expansion. Um, by the end of the year, we have a pretty mo modest goal of 7,000 subscribers by the end of the year. Now, we better hit that. Like, where the fuck are Where are y'all? Where is everybody? Where is everybody? Um, okay. Uh, I know part of Monday Night's craziness was because it was their last show, but do you plan on adding the craziness of Quantum and Woody to season two of Vanquished? That is up to the players, not me. Uh, the tone of how crazy they get and how wild it gets is up to whoever ends up being the players on the show, and I'll let you know when I can. Um, Uh, when am I gonna hire Chip Guy? There's just a lot of old memes coming out in here. Um, Chip Guy will probably be around as well, considering I talked to his handler today. Oh. Uh. Hmm. 
Okay, what pet would Lord Commander have if given the choice and Jackal doesn't count? Bulldog. Just a bulldog? Bulldogs Lord are awesome. a bulldog guy. Come okay. on. Or actually, a big, badass, wide through the shoulder Rottweiler. Or actually, two Great Danes. Two black Great Danes would work great with mm -hmm. studded collars. All of these will work. It depends on how, how old the me, 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 uh, what's his name? The Lord Commander is. Right. Right. In his younger days, I say Rottweiler. Lord. Yeah. As he gets older, it's kind of like uh, Bruce Wayne. Mm -hmm. You know. Depends on. Hey, on Slipshot. Day. I did a shit ton of painting on this channel. What? In 3D. In 3D. What? Don't make me come out there. Um. Since Mitch's skill set is most applicable to improving Corpse Sins, what is his overall view of the show? What is going right? What is going wrong? Where lie the opportunities for improvement? The truth is, I've been up to my ass in Death Room Above and Battletech and um, Necropolis, and I haven't done a deep dive into Shadowrun Corporate Sins to be able to answer those questions. But I uh, had uh, a drink with Lauren tonight. I've been talking to the... Uh, Whip speed, thank you for that follow. For, to the Shadowrun crew. And it's that's going to be uh, a collaboration between us to yeah. try and just make that show as awesome as we possibly can. But I have no answer to that. Uh, there was something somebody said just before that about thinking that hyper rpgs tapped out the current twitch community already and needs to bring new people to twitch i completely disagree there are millions and millions of people on twitch they just don't know about us uh a lot of people don't know about us um a good example is um how fast critical role was able to grow it has a lot to do with the front page placement they had when the show started it was locked for months and months yep. that kind of exposure goes so far to getting the word out. That's that end cap thing we were talking yeah, about Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like the Steam thing. So yeah. um, there are tons and tons of people on Twitch. They just don't know who we are. And we're doing everything we can to make sure in 2017 that they start hearing our name and they start hearing about us and eventually come around. It just, it takes time. Yeah, 10 million people watch Twitch every day. Damn. Nuts. There's plenty of people on Twitch already. Plenty. We just got to find them. Hey, Tink. Good to see um, Bert Mackle wants to know what game Lucas and I played co-op the most as young kids. Mm. We didn't. Did co-op exist when you were kids? You know, they were always like, I mean, if I was going to say anything, it's probably Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, but that oh, was yeah. probably me and my middle brother. Lucas was eight years younger than me. Yeah. Still when I got to college, way. yeah. <laughs> when I got to college and came back, we'd play Halo together and I'd kick his yeah. ass. So. Yeah. You know. I love co-op. All right. Tell him I said that too. Mm -hmm. um, Paxmo says, Mitch, you've already won my heart by knowing and loving Nick and Nora Charles. What is your favorite classic film? Uh, the Thin Man. <laughs> uh, no, my absolute favorite classic film, and it depends, uh, let's just say Black and White <laughs> equals classic. Uh, it's, Here is PC Gaming. Thank you for the follow. It's uh, The Big Sleep, Humphrey Bogart. Mm, it's good right? one. Philip Marlowe. Yeah, yeah. Right? Uh, love that. That's probably my all-time favorite. But I love The Thin Man, and I've watched it many times. My wife and I just love it. Our life goal is to actually become Nick and Nora Charles uh, when we're older and just drink like fish and solve crimes. Drink like fish and solve crimes. And have a dog. That's and have it. a dog. Bam. Cool. Yeah. You got to stop like killing yourself with like three jobs at once before that can happen, right? I will take that under advisement. <laughs> I'm just saying the same thing people are telling me all the time. It's like, hey, yeah, hey, yeah, I, I hear it. Uh, I'll talk to you from the hospital. Yeah, yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's so true. It hurts. <laughs> Money. As a welcome present, I'll bring some fireball with me tomorrow. Hashtag cider, hashtag shadow run. Thank you. Money. Do goblins have a place in hashtag shadow run hashtag Shiawasi for the impossible goal? I think it's about all of us together. Are there goblins in Shadowrun? Uh, there is. Yes, sort of. Hey, new sub! This is <laughs> Subscriber. Guys, I'm
every five subscribers, we give away a Steam key on this channel. That's good, right? Wow, look at all that stuff. Hype, hype, hype! Hype! All right. Thank you. Um... Mitch, now that you'll be running the Seattle studio, can we still troll you during DFA where you have your minions start banning with extreme prejudice? Yes to all, but uh, please bring it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh, Rules the Rules wants to know who in the Hyper RPG studio is the best kisser, Mitch? Uh, that's technically Ryan, yeah. Technically Ryan? Yeah. That's probably true. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, he knows. All right. See, here's the thing. You don't go in hard. You go in soft, and then no, you bring stop, it. No, just stop. Not just right? like Ryan like understands. Re Reevaluate that comment. Uh, and Mitch, he doesn't just go in with his mouth. Mitch, open, can you right? tell us another story like the mascot one? <laughs> uh, yeah, probably. That's the unfortunate thing. Uh, I've never been this age before, but it turns. Oh my God, that's Emily just going stop. <laughs> Dad, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best part of this entire gig, right there. Mm -hmm. uh, where were we? God, it's easy to get lost. What the hell is that said? I got it. I was oh. basically with her and saying that they're happy to see that you're coming on board in the Seattle studio. Okay, good. I'm, I'm excited as hell. Yeah. Right. This is just another uh, chance to tell stories. That's it. That was the biggest, that was the whole point behind doing this in the first place. Yeah. Tell stories. That's right. Uh, What's the biggest lie you've ever told the Overlord? You got this. Hmm? <laughs> 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 yeah, that's right. You got this, pal. You're, you're good. You're good. Should be no problem. Uh, Mitch, how much whiskey do you drink on an episode of DFA? Uh, in character or out of character? <laughs> um, um, between three and four ounces. Okay. Uh, Geico wants to know if we'll be making a wish list to help with the new studio setup. Uh, will we still get labels? We'll always have a wish list, um, but we don't want to say that a wish list is just for one studio over another. If we have a wish list, it's something that all of Hyper RPG might need. Um, we don't want to prioritize one studio over another. So if it's it's something we need, it's just something we need, and it's on the wish list, and all items still. If our purchased off our wish list, we we put the name of whoever sent them on the item uh, to be forever immortalized in our studio. What are you looking at? I was gonna see if this is one of the ones with the name. Oh, it's not. It's over there. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, texture boy. Mm-hmm. Andy, um, Mitch, Scotch or bourbon? Uh, bourbon most nights, but I, I like variety. So even with bourbon, I'll do multiple different bourbons, not on the same night. Uh, but some nights just a scotch night. It depends a lot of the time on what uh, Emily's mother makes me watch on TV. Crun wants to know, Mitch, as an older gamer and someone who grew up on C64 games like Battletech, the Crescent Hawks, Inception, mm -hmm. and the now 409 board game, I'm positive about the current state of the gaming community. However, there are critics out there acting like the remakes, sequels, and reboots of older games are a sign of the dying creativity of game makers, like movies, for example. They feel there's no new material right now. How do you, as a producer of one of the IPs making a comeback, feel about this criticism? Um, I don't think it's accurate. Um, I think I, as a consumer of games and all, you know, all this sort of entertainment, you know, I don't want to see all this stuff constantly coming back. It's like, I didn't, it, well, I don't know. There's been a bunch of remakes recently that I didn't need to see. Um, but it's not because of a lack of creativity. If I think you, that's a bullshit statement. Yeah. God, the, like you said, on Steam now, it's like. <laughs> yeah. I it's think, exploding with yeah. really clever stuff. Yeah. It's not that. What it is, it's economics. For a company like mine is an example that, that has 40 people in it. Right. That's 40 families, you know, that we have to support, really. And therefore, what you need to do is for something our size, where you're talking about many millions of dollars to make a game that can sustain that, you need to cut through the noise. One of the biggest things that you can do as an entertainer is cut through the noise. of There's so much crap. There's a million channels of everything going on. And so the way you cut through that noise is with the word Battletech, you know, with the word Shadowrun, with the word One Day Come On, Crimson Skies, 
that's how you cut through the noise. And that's why PC Gamer is covering yeah. Battletech so closely because it's a they thing. they like it and they're fans right? of it. Yeah. yeah, and that's why. Uh, but the other thing is, what we like to do, at least in Hairbrain Schemes, is stuff like Necropolis, like Golem Arcana, where we'll create a risky, new, weird thing, right? A lot of times with the profits of the, that other, you know, like mm -hmm. tentpole title. And that's, and that's how we do it. We go back and forth. And so we'll always have one safer bet, but there's no safety in this business, and one that is more experimental. So on the whole, that's my answer. Okay. And I'm sticking to it. Um, I do find the comment about, and I think it's the same with movies, that there's so many reboots, there's lack of creativity. I say when people make those comments, it's more about them being too lazy to look for where the creativity lies. Because wow. it's about marketing, and you only know about what you've been marketed to because it's a safer bet for someone to market something that's already been proven to work. Spider-Man will get rebooted over and over and over again because as a property, it's a part of the cultural landscape, landscape that's been around since the 60s. So it's even an if, evergreen. Yeah, if, even it. if you don't know anything about Spider-Man, you know the name Spider-Man. Half the yes. marketing's already done. Of course they're just going to reboot sport. that shit over and over and over again yeah. because it, you, half of your job's done. Everyone fucking knows about it. Mm -hmm. But uh, there's so much creative films, TV, video games out there right now more than ever because the tools are available for anyone to do them. So more than any time in history now, art is more accessible and you get to hear more stories than ever before if you're brave enough to go looking for them. Uh, and Let's talk about AAA games for a minute, right? So this is the, the Halos and mm -hmm. the Gears of War and things like that. I just said two Microsoft things, but those things cost a metric fuck ton of money to make oh yeah through a, an enormous team those those assassin's creed games you know you're talking about 600 people on a team and that's just asses and seats making the game that you have to pay then there's licensing fees and stuff like that but beyond that the marketing costs for a game like that are like the same amount in some cases as making the game itself yeah so they have to bet on a winner they yeah, have to deliver too much from on their the line. shareholders there's and too stuff too like much that. on the line. Yeah. No, I regret that and stuff like that. I wish the world wasn't like that. I just want to make the stories that I want to make. Yeah. You know, Jordan too, by the way. That's his motivation and always has been. He wants to tell stories too and do things nobody else has done. I feel remiss in not bringing him up. Uh, Devil Cran says, Zach, you've worked hard to build a kind of welcoming community here at Hyper RPG. What have you seen change in the Penny Arcade guys and their fan community since the Dick Wolves incident and the subsequent tepid apology that made you feel that they would be a comfortable place to bring the Seattle studio and the Hyper RPG community? Mainly, they're a really good group of people. And I think, unfortunately, sometimes things can get out of hand and a community can go wild. Um, knowing their heart's in the right place is ultimately, I think, the, the big takeaway there. And I feel like in some ways, they might mix better with our audience than their own audience mixes with them. Hmm. Uh, in some ways, so. And Karamind, I see your comment, and I, it makes sense. Uh, he was talking about it. it's, it's about taking an original take sometimes on an old IP. Take a look at our BattleTech game. You'll see the story we're telling. Well, you know, very few stories have been told in BattleTech. We're really trying to tell uh, a fresh story in BattleTech. You know, it's not art, but it it should deliver. Any more questions? Are we done? Is that it? There's so many more. Oh, I'm, I'm just going through them, man. Uh, now I'm getting sad. We're not nearly at the 2K. I guess I'm wrong. You are wrong. You said it too high. Um, are there any plans for Mitch to do any GMing? Also, Zach, which was the weirder experience? GMing all out of bubblegum or the Series 1 Vanquish finale? Go ahead and answer yours first. You plan on uh, doing any GM? Plan on it? No, not right now. I want to. I love to GM. I GM'd at Gen Con for years and years. The official, uh, you know, uh, hero game stuff. But um, Mitch is wrong. Really? Um, but I got to ship Battletech. I've got two jobs and being a GM, oh crap, I don't think so. Not right now. I yeah, not right to, now. Though. You've been telling me about this custom superhero game you've been building for a long time. Yeah, we'll see. Okay. Um, Cake Johnson wants to know if there's any new... Uh, are the new studios in good locations for the cast and crew? With your current experience, how did you approach finding the one in LA? Any hard trade-offs? Oh, there's always hard trade-offs. I mean, we spent... 
well, since October, so two months, uh, we hired a broker, yeah. like, and it took a long time. And a lot of places we really wanted, we didn't get, but ultimately we ended up with something better than what we thought we were gonna end up with, given the options and way things were going. Um, honestly, I'd almost given up on that location. Yeah. I've been kind of like, okay, well, here's the other, and we had a list, Lucas and I had a list of priorities, and it was kind of like we'd go through and say, okay, does it meet this, 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 and this, 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 and this. Um, and there were always sacrifices involved, and we'd relate that to price and what we'd save in the long run and what sacrifices we'd have to make to certain shows. Um, in the end, though, we, we got a really, really, really good deal, and we got really lucky. And as far as location and stuff like that, it's in a great place for the cast and crew. Um, they're going to be very comfortable and great and here now everyone's gonna be in a better location yeah it's, it's an upgrade on both ends it's really yeah. great um, everybody wins which is a crazy yeah it's crazy to even say that because just two months ago it was kind of like fuck <laughs> i mean we're still in that stage uh that's my whole life yeah we're still in that stage it's it's just that um uh you know when you work really hard for something sometimes you'll be like oh did we get lucky it's like oh no we've actually been working for trying to pull that off for a couple months uh so i'm glad it just worked out but uh yeah in my experience there's no such thing as luck yeah um arizon clone 860 asks again how much did acquiring the cast of cineverse accelerate the expansion to la quite a bit i mean originally the idea was just to get them and lucas and then more people um came to us and expressed interest and then it became a from a business standpoint if we have the opportunity it would be wrong not to take it when you look at numbers and what we can gain from it it would be an actual mistake to turn uh to turn our back on it so <sighs> acted on it um fortune favors the bold indeed indeed go big or go home yeah um, Airs and Clone 6969. Oh, yeah. Wants to know if we can expect more front page support in the new year. Uh, we should. I mean, we had a lot mid year. There was a couple good months there. They kind of do it in stations. They, they want to support, but we got to make sure we're putting ourselves in the right position to do it. Sometimes they don't like to come back and support shows they've already supported. Um, which sucks. Yeah. You know, some, you know. So, yeah. We, but we have a lot of new shows, so those will probably get support. And then if those get more viewers, then people come around and start yep. watching the other shows. This is what we've seen all around. Uh, we're pretty proud of the content we're making. So great we posts, know, great content. Yeah, we know that whenever somebody um, watches DFA, usually they're in the chat room and go, "Oh wait, what's this other thing?" Or if they're watching Vanquish or Shadow, yeah. and they're like, "Wait, there's another RPG. I'm gonna check that out too. Yeah. Let me go to YouTube and binge watch all of them. I'll get back to you in a while." Uh, and that's usually what happens. Um. Good night, people. We're, uh, we're going um, Xander Invictus wants to know how much of the budget will go to Iffy proofing the furniture. If he's just mm. not allowed to sit on any of the furniture in the location, that's already been decided. He has to bring his own chair and his own furniture if he's gonna be a part of the show. Which he said he's going to be a part of the show. Um, bring your own furniture, Iffy. Money. I'm about to go holiday shopping in real shops with real people. Please, please wish me luck. Have some of my budget for hashtag shadow run so I don't buy myself too oh. many shiny things. Thank you. This is a shiny thing. Um, Kavotha wants to know, how'd you get such a majestic beard, Mitch? Mm, I push really hard. Okay. Applenees says, so do you think that if he will make it on time for his first show and what do you think he will break first? No. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and yes, my no. patience. Yeah. Oh, nice. Well done. Simtier. <clears throat> Mitch, mm. what is your opinion on the resurgence of CRPG style games such as Pillars of Eternity, Wasteland 2, and Tyranny? Is this affecting the development at HBS at all? Well, I'm not making one of those, so no, it, no, it's not affecting development at all. We're, I mean, we're working on Battletech right now, which is not an RPG. It's a turn-based tactical combat game. Uh, but no, uh, I welcome the competition because those are great game developers and make great stuff, and uh, we'll rise to the occasion. Bring it. That's no problem at all. And they're good guys. I know. I know those guys. Um, 
to both of you, quickly list three of the worst ways to die in the Star Wars universe. Uh, Being in any of the prequels at all. That's a terrible way to go. <laughs> you had me at hello on that one. Uh, the uh, Pit of Sarlacc. Okay. Well, that sucks, right? Yeah, Okay. definitely. Mm, I would Rancor? say maybe suffocating underneath one of Jabba's like folds. Oh, sh oh, you're going like there. All right. I would. It would suck. It'd be a terrible way to die in I the Star Wars universe. I don't want. Yeah, I, I don't he want looks to die like he has fold. a like an, an it's uh, aroma, it's like magnetic. an aroma. Yeah, that's not good. Um. Okay, now I'm really thinking about this. All right, now it's on. Yeah. Hmm. Hold on a minute. Uh. Uh. You know the Wampa, the way he ate his victims. I don't, I, I don't want to be eaten. Uh, Bantha fodder. I don't even know what that is. No, that's not good. Mm. Hold on. Yeah. I'm just trying to think of those, like, other movies. <laughs> Being locked in the cell with Jar Jar. It, you know, that'd be pretty, pretty bad. Oh. Uh, I'm going to kill that motherfucker. There's just no way. Out of three, I mean, yeah. it's tough. I mean, somebody mentioned something about falling in a lava pit, and it just makes me think back to Rogue One, and I'm... It's not really a spoiler, but it did crack me up. It was like, I guess they have to make Vader more emo than Kylo Ren. <laughs> so he builds his fortress on the planet where he yeah. <laughs> burned himself nearly to death. Like, <laughs> such a fucking emo thing to yeah. do. I'm gonna stare at the fire all day that I lost all of my skin to. It's just... Right, don't I just I don't know I don't I don't know why I laugh at those things. But the second I saw his castle, I knew exactly what it was gonna be. I was like, oh what? Really? Come on! <laughs> so melodramatic, Vader. So melodramatic. Um. Okay. Okay. Mitch, with so yes. much history in the BattleTech universe, how do you guys not go insane trying to pick which stories to touch on? Uh, that was actually kind of easy. Um. What we learned doing Shadowrun Dragonfall was there's so much history in Shadowrun, so much history in Battletech. What you do is you find an area where not much has been written about. Particle Fox, thank you for that follow. Right, so you find an area, you know, everything's been written about forever and there's hundreds and hundreds of source books. So you find one area where just a little bit has been written and then you find a, a nugget of story that it that attracts you. Hey man, Marauder! Subscriber. <laughs> yeah, that sucked ass. No. Okay. Thank you very much. What was your favorite NES game? Wow. Oh, oh, that was Atari. Hang on a minute. Oh yeah, I don't name an NES. Mine was game. Tiger Heli. No, I didn't play that. I like Tiger. Shoplifter Heli. was was Shoplifter NES. I don't know why I liked it. Pass. I, I also like Ninja Gaiden. That was oh, okay. I like Ninja Gaiden. That was fucking great. Yeah. I almost got a chance and to... And Teenage uh, Mutant Ninja Turtles. Uh, I played two. that coin-up. The two one. Yeah. I was, you know, I was of the coin-up generation, so I was, uh, Emily's mom and I hung out in arcades a lot. A lot. Karataka. That kind mm. of stuff. Um, do you, do you have any personal plans for Hyper RPG? Uh, personal? Yeah. Yeah, I do, actually. Um, uh, I want to really work with every single person in every single cast, get to know every single person, find out uh, what their potential is and try and bring it up. Cool, cool. Uh... Oh, Tech Mobile, yeah. Why do West Battle Coasters Zone. insist on drinking coffee made from over-roasted, unripened beans? I do not like over-roasted beans. I don't know who's telling you that that's what West Coaster is like. No, probably not a West I know Coaster. That's, I know that's what Rai Rai likes, and he's not a West Coaster. Burn ass shit. No. Gross. No. Uh, Rai Rai and I are Chicago boys. AJ says, Mitch, who loves me? 
Uh, Mitch loves you. What? Uh, Ozai75, Mitch, when are you going to bring Kims and Skies back, and why will it be this year as an RPG on Hyper RPG? <laughs> uh, hmm. That's interesting. By the way, sorry, real fast. When you should uh, just you should just be like, hey, Bruns, uh, open up a portal and open Legend to yeah uh, to the Crimson Skies the universe. Crimson Skies. No, that's nice. That doesn't let me GM it, but that would be awesome. Emily, Emily's first role playing game that we played at home was called Justice Incorporated. It was a nineteen thirties you know pulp you know Indiana Jones thing, and Scott Shukin was in our uh, game too. He was Jeffrey Wiz, and he had. Bandit the Raccoon of the Future. So, and my son actually played the, the raccoon. Your son played the raccoon? Yeah. The raccoon was a, kind of an NPC. I would tell him what to do. The, the raccoon was actually smarter than Scott's character. Uh, yeah, it was with Scott and Undead Mantis. Undead Mantis is a mod now. Yeah, I heard. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Yay. Yeah, he was in his wait. I actually remember his character. Hold on. Uh, if I can find a picture, I will totally post that picture of Scott and Bandit. With Bandit on his back, yeah, right? I can find yeah, it. yeah, yeah. Better. Yeah, thanks. That's also, so cool. Undead Mantis. Yeah, yeah, we were just talking about him. Yeah, he played. Oh, God. Yes. Emily, who'd he play? Oh, um, uh, uh, the socialite. Yes. Socialite. Uh, uh, oh, Fist. There are three Delaney there. Robinson Fist the, the third. third. <laughs> Sorry. How adorable. Anyway, RPG stories. Let me tell you about my character. Okay. <laughs> no, I'm done. Oh, okay. Okay. That's um, when I got a Gen Con for like 30 years, though. Can I tell you about my character? <laughs> Ursir Owl asks, Zach, will you give Dustin a 2ME? No, I will not, because we have a 1ME, and that gets the job done. And getting the job done is what's important to me. They don't need toys. They just need equipment that works. Moving on. All right. Rubicon says, I like that question, Mitch. Is there a possibility of Crimson Skies ever coming back to a modern system? Everybody's hung up on Crimson Skies, man. That's because it needs it great. to come back. Great game. Oh, Felina Wolfling, what? what? Subscriber. Thank you for that subscription. Yeah. One away from a Steam Key giveaway. <laughs> Bam! Um, Kawaka. Money. Overlord, I have followed you since GNS, and I wanted to thank you for bringing Hyper to Seattle so that we could have the Thumper family we have, like Mitch, Emily, Goobers, etc. I can't wait for the expansion and all it entails. Much love. Hashtag Shadowrun. Hashtag Aries. That's Thank badass. Uh, Dracona says, hey Mitch, no question, just wanted to say Hanukkah so Okay, I don't even know how to say that. I'm not... Okay. Uh, where, where are we? Right uh, right? I'm at the top there. Uh, Hanukkah Sameach. So, yeah, see, I would have butchered that. Yeah. I would have butchered it. And thank you for that. Happy Hanukkah. Happy Hanukkah. Happy Hanukkah. Sameach. Put on your yarmulke. Uh, to Mitch, do you have any Justin Bailey's in Shadowrun? I have no memory of what Justin Bailey's is. Honestly, I'll... Commander Dunsale says, Mitch, as the executive producer for Hyper RPG Seattle, how do you think your style will improve the channel and engage the community in your new role? And what's the one feature aside from co-op your laser focus on getting into Battletech after launch? <laughs> after launch... All right, I'll go first one first. Energy, energy, energy. Right, that's the biggest thing for me. It's just energy. Uh, every show, energy. Now there won't there will be times of low energy. Goobers did a whole prayer thing on uh, Jackal on Death from Above, but energy. I love energy, and I think a Twitch audience loves energy. So indeed they do. So there you go. So that that's that. And then what else past co-op do I want to get get in uh, tournaments? I think uh, to BattleTech. I'd love to get tournaments in there. Um. Mitch, how did you get into game development? Was there a particular game or two that made you say, holy shit, this is what I want to do? This this is Honesty Hour, right? Uh, all right, here's how I got into game development. 
I was uh, a professional management trainer. I would travel around the country doing uh, classes in how to manage human beings. And that is uh, really nice, but when you're traveling around the country, you don't know anybody. So what I would do is I would be in my hotel room at night and I would get a bag of cigars. And I was young at the time. And I would sit there in my underwear and I would smoke cigars. And I had an Apple Classic, a Mac Classic. Duncan Ben! Boom! Thank you for that follow. Thank you. Uh, and I had a Mac Classic. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was what a laptop was at the time. And I would write paper and pencil role-playing games um, for money. And the guy who I was writing for said, why don't we get into video games? And God, this is a long story. Hang on. Yes, I was an HR management trainer. Deal. So, um, what happened was... Money. Mitch, what was your favorite plane in Crimson Skies? Mine was the Bulldog. Hashtag Evo. So funny, like I can remember I this. I've made so many games, I can't remember proper nouns anymore, sorry. Anyway, what happened was, real fast to get into video games, I faked my way into video games. I, um, I went to the Consumer Electronics Show with my best friend, we got the guidebook, there were 70 game companies in there, we made a trifold brochure, desktop publishing was brand new, we knew how to do it from making role playing games. We sent out 70 brochures to 70 companies, exactly 10%, 7 of them came back and said we'll meet with you at next CES. We went there and uh, just conned them into giving us a contract. Just mm -hmm. we, we had worked on a whole bunch of major IPs for paper and pencil role playing game but it never touched a video game and one of them just bought our line of bullshit. And we were in England in a goat pasture in Wales with a producer from Sony Interactive Europe. And he said, and I'm standing in sheep shit, and he said, how much, how much what? How much to quit your day job and do this full time? And I pretended to calculate the number in my head. Thank you, here it comes. And I came up with just a very large number, mm -hmm. a very large number. And he, go, and he goes like, uh, never forget, because he was smoking and he had a beard and it, it was like yellow from nicotine. I'll never forget this guy. He goes, what? That's more than I make. And I said, yeah, I'm the fucking talent. And he sh put out his hand and he said, put her there. We got a deal. And I shook it. And I said, could I talk to my partner for a minute? So he left the goat pasture, went into his house, uh, which was built into the side of a hill, just like the Hobbit. And I turned to my partner who was shaking. And he said, what did you do, man? And I said, I made us a ton of money. And then I started to shake and I started to sweat. <laughs> and I said, all right, all right, Ray, what's a pixel? <laughs> and he told me what a pixel was. So I said, what is a polygon? <laughs> he described that we are fucked. <laughs> and that's how I got into game development. True story. It's honesty hour. How, uh... By the way, I did not know how to use a computer. So... I knew how to type. That's it. How, um... <laughs> so it finally came out. 11.28. There it is. How... Uh... <laughs> thank you for What's that. What's the follow-up question oh. of that one? Um, well, I want to know, did you get through that first agreement and still remain on a good working relationship with the individual that gave you all the money? The individual, yes, his company, no. <laughs> <laughs> I, I intercepted an inner, person, an inner memo and said, uh, the Americans are robbing us blind. <laughs> That's it. The Americans are robbing us blind. It was glorious. Um, they were, to be fair, they were absolutely incompetent, this group that I was working with. Um, I never once played the game that I designed because they never had an executable of it that I could actually play. It did come out, it got amazing reviews for the story, the uh, the AI, that just the complexity. At the time, nothing had been like that. Yeah, yeah. Edge Magazine gave it five stars. It was amazing. Uh, but no, my contract was not renewed. Yep. Yeah. Hmm. Um... Sagitopian wants to know how have responsibilities been shifted with the change to employee structure? What are the executive producers, producers responsible for? What's Ryan? I demand, uh, do you have estimates on the increase in bandwidth and a window for profitability with the new structure? Yes, I do have some of those things that I can answer. We have spreadsheets. Yeah, stuff. we do. Yeah, crazy. You know, we're businesses. How does that work? Um, 
Um, so basically, um, what having Mitch operate as an executive producer appear. Like Money. That is an inspirational story. What was that first game again? Hashtag Shadow Run. And that game was ET for the Atari. Game. <laughs> <laughs> now that would be a real. Kicker. That would be fucking awesome. Yes. Uh, what was the game? Uh, um, that game was called Sentient. S E N T I E N T. What? And there was a character in that game called Mason Garlack. Look oh. it up. True story. You can find a picture of him in an image search. He has one eye. Interesting. There it is. Going deep. Boom! Honesty out. Going deep. Look at that. Going um, okay, deep. Okay, so uh, the whole point with having Lucas as executive producer in LA, Mitch as executive producer here, yeah. is to tighten the ship in both locations to have a chain of command where creatively everyone's on board. And that's how it will always be here. From a creative standpoint, um, you know, and this was really important for Dustin and Lucas in LA too. No one is necessarily above anyone else from a creative standpoint. There's a hierarchy there where someone can say, no, we can't do that. But as far as pitching ideas, bringing things to the table, making shows better, it's an equal playing field there. And everyone kind of has the same responsibility to make whatever's happening on screen the best that it possibly can be. Um, but there still has to be somebody that's making sure that that's happening and that the resources are being allocated properly and that the talent's being managed properly. And that's where Mitch and, and Lucas comes in. And yeah. both uh, situations, which opens up um, my bandwidth to think a little bit bigger, uh, bigger picture and more about the overall movements that need to be made for Twitch in general and shows and how, what technologies we can use to capitalize on the shows and make them better and make them work in a more interesting way. Um, and then from a producer standpoint, um, that's more just like day-to-day -day creativity. Ryan's still on production management, which means his job won't change. He's still gonna be doing all the things he's doing now. Um, he should just have a little bit more bandwidth. He's still gonna be booking a lot of our talent, handling, making sure the shows are going off without a hitch, working a lot on the metagame systems and the purchasable systems uh, to, to make sure those are going down. And Emily's still community manager. So in a lot of ways, and it those- It was not Ian Hetherington. That's very funny. It was not Ian, sorry. Good guy, it was not him. Sorry, just uh, gotta get that out. <laughs> Um, <laughs> yeah, you gotta watch when you tell stories. Uh, Sorry, go ahead. Our job is to give you bandwidth so you can do a better job. Other, yeah, well, right, thing. and the same thing, um, I get frustrated now that a lot of times I don't have time to watch our own shows to give them the proper attention they need and to come up with those big picture kind of like ideas of what a show needs, I need to be able to watch them and dive into them. Um, but too often I'm doing design work, video editing, things like that, that as a CEO, I shouldn't be doing. That's ridiculous. Nope. Um, so the extra bandwidth helps a lot with that. And the way we've organized our schedule has a lot to do with helping us with bandwidth. And that um, we've set up our schedule in a way that, and, and what people don't realize a lot with these live streams, I did the same thing at GNS, I did the same thing at Social Tron Live before that, and I did the same thing when we first started Hyper. A lot of our shows aren't thrown on a schedule willy-nilly, just be like, boom, here's where they are. It's a complicated, yes, it was me. Thank you for that follow. It's a complicated setup of, um, of management of resources of what can actually be achieved mm -hmm. in a given time frame of moving things around. Um, you don't want to have a certain show, like we would never want to have DFA back right up next to say Shadowrun. The setups are too different. Mm -hmm. um, and it would be too much work to try to switch them over quickly and efficiently and give them each the proper attention that they need. But now we can do that because we have two separate locations with two separate studios. So that allows us to get one show set up in LA while the show up here is filming. Yeah. But because there wasn't a show before the one that's filming here, they've had all day to set up or a couple hours. Which is a big instead deal. of thirty minutes. Yeah. Instead of running around yelling, "Oh um, God, we got to do this, we got to do this, we got to do this," which is constantly on fire. Yeah, which is usually what's happening. So now we have the ability to set up a show with more time mm -hmm. and test those things before we just do it. And that will be the same for both locations. So usually what we'll do is we'll be streaming down in Los Angeles, and then we go offline for Seattle to go on, and then while Seattle's on we're building the next show in LA and getting it ready. So both teams have more time and more bandwidth to get done what they need to make the shows tighter, make them start tighter, or they better. And if they don't, I'll be extremely upset, but that's the goal. <laughs> that's what should happen. Um, 
Will costs go down with Seattle going to Penny Arcade like rent? Yes, but then costs go up by having another studio. That's just the trade-off. Um, and the downside of Penny Arcade is they use that studio too. So it's not that we can just randomly go in there and stream stuff whenever we want. Right. But we can do that at the Los Angeles studio. So you'll see a lot more of the random laid back streams happening down there because we live in that house and we can do whatever the fuck we want. But Penny Arcade, we have to focus on our large, big content uh, because there's timed windows that we agree to be in there and get our shit done. Um, heard a whisper, is Rai Rai no longer going to be a part of Gauntlet? I missed the Q&A last week of moving to LA or something. Yes, Gauntlet will be heading to LA. It probably won't start right off the bat. And Rai Rai and I were both never meant to be the full-time GMs for that show. Um, we really like Paul and unfortunately Paul had some stuff come up um, that he needed to take care of and now that we're taking the show to Los Angeles We're going to be searching for the right GM for that show Because um, we've always wanted that to be a show that we'd get the right person on to bring the right feeling and attitude towards it uh, We were just both temporary hosts on that um, What are you guys' favorite games video game or not and not ones you created? Mine's Mass Effect 2 No, okay I uh I love uh the Arkham series. Yeah. Love, or the uh, you know as a Batman fan, that first you know Arkham Asylum game. That's one of those I wish I had made, right? Because it was really true to Batman. It was the first time Batman was truly realized on screen, and that combat mechanic. Mm -hmm. You remember the flow combat? I just love that thing. So that's one of my all-time favorites. Sweet. Yep. What did I say? Oh, I said Mass Effect Two. Will probably go down as my favorite game of all time That's as far as good. hours i put into it but i it, i got to that game at a really important time in my life like i needed that escape in that moment and i think that's the same with movies too uh that certain movies or games have more to do with where you were when you played it it's huge yeah that's a big that's a big Music part of my too. life that's why i love going to cons that's why i like meeting the people that play my games because a lot of the times they have a story about oh man my dad was in the hospital we didn't know if he was going to make it this was the only thing i had and then he came through but i want to thank you for that game it's like, holy crap it makes you feel like it's not just about pixels and stuff like right. that so that's a big deal yeah um i can grow a beard in a week sorry that was just for Porter and play says i can't remember at the moment but have you guys then rebroadcast in the past your stats show any benefit from them as someone who is not in the u.s I watch a lot of VODs, but would a rebroadcast allow new people to discover the channel when you're offline? So, Port and Plays, we did do rebroadcasts for like the six, first six months of this being a channel, and we didn't see an influx in discoverability. In fact, we get more subscribers when we're offline. Now, I've been messaging Twitch for a very long time now to be a part of the new, of uh, the Clips beta program, or the, uh, the playlist beta, because I would like us to be able to run playlists. Um, so people can communicate in the chat room while they're watching instead of just watching the VOD. I like the playlist feature. The other reason we had to stop doing those rebroadcasts is um, we got to a point where we had to start giving a lot of data to possible sponsors and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And the rebroadcasts were heavily skewing our data oh, and I made see. things look worse because it was lowering our average minutes watched. Right, it was right, lowering right. our average numbers yeah, yeah, I get it. because so few people were watching. So we had to stop doing that for the most part because it was messing with our numbers too much. Yeah. yeah. Good to meet you at Gen Con. It was fun to play Death from Above in person with yeah, people. Yeah, it was fun. <laughs> and trying to cut through the noise at Gen Con. All right, you maggots. Um, Sage says, I believe donations were not targeted as your primary income stream when the channel started. No, they were not. How do you think featuring donations has impacted the channel positively, negatively, and what are your plans for 2017 in regards to income sources? I know donations are not dependable cash flow. What other income streams have you evaluated, pursued, and how successful has it been? Well, partnerships is always a big one. Mm -hmm. um, doing partnerships with people allows us to um, bring in money that's usually at a set value. Which Can is you the, give an example of a partnership real quick? Uh, value, yeah. per se. So okay. like we pitch um, and this is still in the works, but you know, once I officially lock cast on that, then I'll pitch to them to cast. I have a certain ask for how much money I would like to run the show right. because it's constant promotion for their brand. Yeah. But we have to be big enough to do it. It's that kind of like, as you get big, your options get bigger. Yeah. Um, which is part of the reason, um, we're doing this kind of branch expansion is so we can have access to people who live in that area who want to be guests on things mm -hmm. who make our reach better who then make marketers and partners more excited to work with us 
it all comes around full circle. So that's how we reach that long-term goal. Um, and uh, But always, donations were gonna be more of a revenue stream than subscriptions um, because we keep 100% of that. So it's not easy to say that it's like mm -hmm. originally. But that being said, we're actually, um, we are actually uh, very good now at gauging exact flow of tip income. Mm -hmm. Very good at it. Um, yeah. We've got enough data to be able to read that and follow it and know where it's gonna go in the next month usually. Um, so uh, it, it's a good source of revenue, but it's not, we want to expand upon doing partnerships more than anything. Subscription revenue would be great. Um, ad revenue is kind of a no-go. Um, but then also sponsored events is a big mm -hmm. one too, wanting to be able to do big game releases for people and all that good stuff. Yeah, so. that uh, co-op death jam. For yeah, and we, and we have some things in the works right now that, that we're, we're trying to work out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, okay. Mm -hmm. oh Don't know if this has been mentioned yet, but any chance of more Ivan? Uh, Ivan wants to be involved um, in whatever he can be, but he's obviously very busy at Geek and Sundry and we respect his time there. Um, he has mentioned that he would love to be involved with um, things that we do on Saturday night on Chunky Salsa, so I'm sure you'll see him around. Um, and there's a Zach, I understand why you want to not have the studios be Hyper RPG South and North, but do we refer to each one then? But how do we refer to each one then? Sometimes differentiating them is needed, like if we were talking about equipment one studio needs, or how a given improvement is going. Um, I think you just say still Hyper RPG. I think people get the idea. If you're talking about a specific I think people are gonna be able to tell the difference, is what I'm saying. Um, on camera, to you, it looks like the same thing. The show should have the same quality, they should have the same sound effects, they should have the same flow. Um, so it's one channel. And I think it's really important that we keep it one channel because the last thing we wanna do um, is say one or the other because I know communities well enough to know if you give people the option to, to, divide. to A or B, they will take. A or B, yeah. and that's a terrible thing to do for a community when you're starting out something. That's just how it is. Um, you have to start as one communal item, and if you go any other way from that, you will divide the community just by allowing that language to exist because communities are that fragile, uh, which is weird, but they are. Yeah. They really are. Rules the rules got the rank of major for nine months. That's right. Nine I love months. That. Nine months. Poof. You're okay. Um, can we get honesty hours an alternating show between North and South, Mitch and Zach? Probably not. <laughs> you that sounds like fear. I heard fear in your voice. <laughs> well, I mean, uh, it's also one of those things that like Mitch is the executive producer here. Uh-huh. But that mm -hmm. is a limited number of days out of the week and Absolutely. still has a studio to run of his own and I'm going to respect his time as much as I possibly can. My wife thanks you. <laughs> <laughs> My job is ultimately to be here and only here. Um, Mitch has more than one job and we have to respect the time on that because he's got a Battletech game to make. Yeah, and that studio to run at the same time. That, uh, by the way... Uh... <laughs> Thank you for that follow, by the way. <laughs> Dagger found out about me being the executive producer, like, after I told you yes. Oh, cool, 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 cool. <laughs> so she's like, what does that mean? It means I'm back in go, go, go mode, baby. <laughs> so see you next week. <laughs> Actually, she's really happy. Yeah. Just, there is no reservations on our family's side. They know how happy this makes me, just for the record. Mm -hmm. uh, working hard is fun. Challenging myself is fun. Yeah. <laughs> Living a long life. Well, that's interesting. <laughs> yeah, you know. One step at a time. Yeah. Um, Kaz says, I apologize, it's been asked a million times before. How is the color scheme chosen? It's completely my personal bias, but sometimes it hurts my eyes. I do love the graphics behind you now, though. Uh, super stoked about the changes. Hyper RPG was my first sub ever on Twitch because of feels from Honesty Hour with Zach months ago. I want you to do well. Oh, thanks, Kaz. Um, so, um,. As far as color scheme, it was my choice mm -hmm. based on the original mistake that some people liked. Mm. Um, but 
we could do testing and know that this worked better. It might hurt some people's eyes because white does hurt some people's eyes, but overall, mm. the high contrast grabs people's attention better. Agreed. Yeah. Um, and uh, we've learned that the hard way. Um, Mitch, if HBS likes to go back and forth between tentpole and weird, any hints on what the next weird one will be? No. No? Okay. No. Cool. Uh, Mitch, did you ever go to the airlock in Kirkland? You bet. Uh, when we uh, shipped uh, Shadowrun Dragonfall, that's where we had our ship party, and that's where the Battletech pods were. Uh, and so we all got behind the wheel, so to speak, of a battle mech, and I sucked. I got to play in the pods at Gen Con, and it was a lot of fun. Oh, yeah. I got my ass kicked. Oh, I had yeah, no idea yeah. what was going on. It was, God, I had six of those pods in my studio at Microsoft and Facet at Microsoft. They still worked, and the people that worked in Facet actually made them, so oh, wow. they were able to keep them running and stuff like that. And just, you get in the cockpit, you close the door, you've got two screens, right? One's your view screen, one's your radar. Every single button works. There's two uh, pedals, there's a joystick and a throttle, and a microphone so you can talk to your teammates, you know, without having to push to talk. And so, it was just great. That's what a great experience. Jordan killed it with that. It was fun. I missed them. Um, is one of the bathrooms going to be the control room for the new studio? Uh, it, one of them probably could be, but, <laughs> you know. Um, Seeing the people that I've seen down there, I think it's best to keep them bathrooms. Yeah. Yeah. I watched yeah. the video. Yeah, mm. yeah. Five bathrooms. That I, we don't know why. Four of them full baths. Great. <laughs> no idea why. Well, who made that decision when they were building yeah. the house? If you don't no know, idea. we've got one toilet here. And one, and it's not great. It ain't. Nope. So that is the biggest upgrade at the new studio. Mm -hmm. Plus, Penny Arcade has a really nice setup, too. Mm -hmm. So everybody's getting an upgrade. Mm-hmm. Um, Ginger Pina says, did they ever say why it's a house? Because it makes the most sense um, from a financial standpoint. Uh, because I don't value my... I have to be careful what I say because yeah. Malika's watching. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> to save the company money um, and to save time... I'm living. If I don't have to travel to work, right? Yeah, I'm also living in the house and paying a portion of the rent. Um, so that saves the company money because when you start looking at studio space large enough to do what we wanted to do, um, it was very expensive. So we started looking into, okay, well, how do we save money? Well, if we get a house that has as much square footage that we need and I can live there, we'll save money. So that was the, the choice uh, to make that kind of sacrifice to save money, so. But it's a pretty good sacrifice because we ended up, I mean, it's like 14 feet high ceilings. Yeah. Um, double the square foot of this. Yeah, no, it's badass. It's ridiculous, it's ridiculous. And we're mainly able to do that because I'm also paying the rent and Alex is also paying the rent, so. A portion? Yeah, just a portion. Based on square footage. Based on square footage. I'm not for both of them. I'm not. I'm not. Uh, I'm not gonna pay all of it <laughs> to live there. That would, well, I couldn't. That's fucking ridiculous. No, but we're saving a lot of money. We're saving too. Saving a good amount of money that way. Mm -hmm. Um. Let's see. Can Just we... for the record, did you talk about Penny Arcade has made us a great deal? Also, yes, it's a great They're deal. They're very, very generous. To Basically, us, and just that's paying saved utilities. Us, yeah. So that saved us a, a metric fuck ton of money too. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. That's. It's a hell of a deal. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you, Penny Arcade. Um, D and D Maniac says, "Can we get all sub and follower tip sounds to Bert's laugh? You'll hear that laugh soon." Will I? He's a good guy. He's a really good guy. I'm totally looking forward to it. It sounds fucking fabulous. <laughs> the way you sell it so well. No, he's a good dude. He's mm -hmm. one of my favorite people. I just that's as excited as I get about people. Mm -hmm. That's honestly more than I can say about most people. It's time for you to start mocking me because we're not making that two grand for Shadowrun. I knew we wouldn't, but uh, Of course you knew you wouldn't. You, you know everything. Uh, That's good. Let's see. How are you guys so awesome, and why is it because of Malika? Uh, on my side, it actually has nothing to do with Malika. <laughs> I think that's fair, right? Mm -hmm. That's cool. 
Love Malika. She's fabulous. She worked at Hairbrain Schemes for a while. She was fabulous. Um, a lot of me having any worth is because of Malika. As people here know, when she's not around, I pretty much crumble up into nothing uh, because I... That's the thing. Yep. Hmm. Um, some of us are very helpless people because we spend more time working than taking care of ourselves. And sometimes it's good to have someone in your life who's like, hey, idiot. I think today she called me an, a, 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 a nidwit or a nit, nimwit or something like that. And I was like, oh, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> Tough love is still love. <laughs> something like, you nimwit. And I was like, nimwit. I just started laughing. <laughs> I was like, oh, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Don't ever change. Um, <laughs> hey, thank you for that reset. Mitch, when are you going to join Discord and get to know and be terrified by the mods? Yeah, you gotta join not. Discord. No, you have to. No, yeah, you do. No, Executive no. producer. Did we did Job we miss the part where I do whatever the fuck Job I want? Job requirement. Job requirement. You gotta know what's going on. So when am I supposed to do that? You I should mean, have done it by now. What? No, I mean, no, I understand how to sign up mm -hmm. for Discord. You sent me instructions that I deleted. <laughs> but it's like, oh yeah, yeah, another place that I have to look all day. But it, it your honest answer though. Thank you, Lee. I Thank read you. all that. I have Go no ahead. idea, but great. Love you too. The, um, I can't be distracted by Discord while I'm making battle tech. Mm -hmm. That's just, that has to stay sacrosanct. Does that make sense? Money. Hey, Nidwit, don't say part of your worth is because of me. All your worth is because of me. <laughs> Hi, Malika. <laughs> Well, at least we got that clarity. <laughs> I don't know if that was actually her. It doesn't so. matter. It doesn't matter. I'm just seeing the Venn diagram of what is you and what is caught by her. Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, so you know, during the, the the normal course of the of the BattleTech business day, I can't be in Discord, and I I have to I have to cord wall that off. Yeah, that team deserves 100 percent of my attention. True, and I will say that it is a scary road to go down. I was answering questions in there at 1 a.m. last night. <laughs> One of us is a fucking moron. <laughs> <laughs> so, what if I had discipline? Uh, You'd okay. get sucked in. You'd uh, get sucked just, in. Yeah, but that was just a lie anyway, yeah. because discipline, yeah, right. This is the drinking, smoking guy, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, no, uh, I'm king of discipline. Question for Mitch. How far in advance of the full release will the Battletech beta be, be available. Definitely want to support and play, but my core schedule means I won't have time, and if the beta is close to full release, then saving the extra bit of money wouldn't be that bad either. Thanks. Let me think of how to answer that. We have a pretty good idea when beta will be released. Uh, I will say that it will be released in enough time before a uh, final release that it's actually useful that we could take the feedback and do something with it or take the bugs and fix things with it. Um, but I can't give you more than that because uh, the truth is I don't know. Until you do a beta, you know, I've got my schedule, our, we have our schedule, and let's face it, I'm not running the, uh, the Battletech project, by the way. Mike McCain runs the Battletech project. He's the uh, game director, and by the way, he's fucking brilliant. So I help out and I'm working on the single player story, but it's his gig. Uh, with Jordan, you know, as designer and executive producer on that. So, uh, but until you do the beta to see where you are and find the bugs, you just don't know, right? So we have an idea, we have a target for release, but I can't answer that question honestly, nor even if I knew the answer, would I? Because we don't talk about release dates until we're sure of them. Cool. I'm excited for the beta. I'm excited for the beta too. Have, if you haven't, see, go to go to a PC Gamer or go to uh, uh, BattletechGame.com and take a look at the at the gifs or gifs. Do you say gifs or gifs? Oh, uh, I say gif like a proper human being. Okay, you're one of them. So anyway, there are these moving pictures of uh, melee, and they're really awesome. So check it out. Yes, I was in full producer mode. What can I say? I was a full producer for a long time. Um. And yes, watching McCain's headshot get 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 headshot to the head, get beta as we like to call it, was one of the single greatest moments of the entire year. Money. Some cash for the new studio's five bathrooms TP fund since Zach won't buy it. 
Extra 10 for Keller's Bucket. Mitch, was absolute pleasure meeting you this past July at HRPG. Thanks, Dan, again. Crap, you know, I just realized I won't be able to steal HBS's uh, toilet paper. <laughs> we let Damn it, go. I got five bathrooms! <laughs> we have to fly down with the duffel bag from HBS. <laughs> Not eight heads in a duffel bag, it's eight rolls in a duffel bag. Okay. I wonder what uh, Penny Arcade's toilet paper situation is that's like. a great question gotta find out where they're hiding all those extra rolls mm -hmm. um trogaf unfortunately did not get to watch the season finale of gauntlet um commander dunso says zach you originally worked on having some more educationally focused or highbrow shows um while you still have some element of that lineup with shows like full tilt do you see 2017 bringing back that direction or not focus on art which is great too no mm -mm. just didn't work um i wish but again in success all things are possible uh, but, um, starting off, uh, definitely for at least the six months, it's going to be what we do better than anyone else on Twitch, which is RPG games. Uh, that is what we do better than anyone else. Mm -hmm. I'm very confident in that. Um, we produce them better. We shoot them better. We, we just make them more fun. And if you're really, really good at something, that's what you fucking do. So. Uh, Shadzar. Uh, go read the IRL um, Terms of Service, basically, blog post that they even made. It's basically a one-on-one. Subscriber. Also, why do you care, dude? <laughs> That's my biggest question. Why do you care? I would say if you're curious, ask Twitch. Let's try to find Thank you for that subscription. It's time for a Steam Key giveaway. Get active in the chat room. Is anyone here to do a Steam Key giveaway? Wait, Emily has to drive you home, right? Yeah, why? I'm, I'm maybe she's still here. Oh, I hope so because I've been drinking. Okay. <laughs> um, oh, so apparently there's still places that have those Battletech pods. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, um, they bring them to Gen Con every year. It's great. Yep, yep. So fun. Um. Okay. Okay. Oh, she's here. All right, great. Oh, Active in the chat. Um. <laughs> Mitch, what was the most ridiculous incident which occurred while you were creating a game? Bug or interaction with a person, etc. It's the most. Been, oh my God! It's been thirty years. Um. Uh, well, the craziest thing I can remember right now um, is I was working on Shadowrun Returns. I was at Gen Con, I think. It could have been PAX. But, um... Devil Crayon! Congratulations, you won! hoo -ah. Do we know what Devil Crayon won? Nope. Right. Emily does. We don't. Sure. Well, that's for her. That's for Brighter Minds. Uh, so I met Gen Con with Jordan, and we're walking through, and this girl walks up to us wearing a complete head-to-toe uh, white wolf shaman costume from Shadowrun, right? She's wearing a wolf head, right? And she looks great. It's a beautiful costume, really well made. And she tells us the story. She said, I have to tell you this. And she said, um... When uh, my dad was young, he played Shadowrun. He lived in Chicago, and we we're like, "Oh, we're from Chicago." He said, I know, I know. So he played Shadowrun, and Shadowrun was set in Seattle. And my dad fell so in love with Shadowrun that he moved to Seattle, and that's where he met my mom. And if it wasn't for Shadowrun, I would not exist. And we're all fucking <laughs> crying our eyes out on the floor at Gen Con. The three of us, and we're all hugging. <laughs> like that was so. That was pretty nuts. Feelings. Nothing more. Well, yeah. Uh, Sorry about that. Somebody want to know how many bedrooms the LA house has? Oh, it's Odd World Steam Key. Yeah. That's what I mean. <laughs> um, Lauren Lanning. The uh, bedrooms. There's four. Uh, one will be mine and Malika's. One will be Alex's, and then we're going to have a dedicated uh, podcast room and a dedicated streamer room, and then the main RPG room. Uh, with so many bathrooms, will someone be figured out for using the space 
new show, possibly Toilet Talk or a Call of Duty stream. Toilet Talk. Nah, we're not gonna do that. Toilet uh, Talk. Zagras suggests that we have new battle pods with Vive support. Gotta get that, that Vive support. Got it. Some VR I'm not a battle pods. Not a believer? You know what? Here's the truth. I, so I've done VR. I, I mean, I've done VR in the 90s. Um, I've never had a proper VR experience that sold me. So if you have something that you think would really turn me, so mm -hmm. to speak, turn me. VR. Yeah, turn me. Um, I don't know. All the stuff that I like is I wanted probably... to play that little Batman investigation thing. Mm, yeah, That's yeah, yeah. not a... But, you know, it's just Batman. I mean, I feel like uh, all the things I like, you're you're too old for. So. Is that right? Yeah. Mm. You probably mm, like mortgages. To, you wouldn't be able to handle them. <laughs> um. Uh, what's your, what's your favorite guys. BattleTech clan? I don't go there. Okay. Um. Do you? Somebody asked me, do you think having a broadcast in front of an audience is a viable option as a one shot or maybe an annual event? For one of the more popular shows, example like Critical Live in Indianapolis during Gen Con. Huh. Here's the thing. That cost a fortune yeah. to do. Yeah. A fortune to put on. We don't have that kind of audience. Mm -hmm. Sadly, there's just not enough of you to do that. There's enough of you to keep us doing this amazing shit right now. But to pull off one of those live shows, the expense is it's it's a lot. It's a huge expense. Insane um, the membrane. Like doing a show like that would be like three months of our budget. Nah, two months of our budget. Um, so not on the table yet, but in success, all things are possible. <laughs> we get enough audience members, we get a show popular enough, it's possible. But right this, now? We no. did discuss this at dinner tonight. We did. Yeah. But it's a fucking fortune to do. Yeah. Um, Mitch, now that I know you're a fan of the Thin Man series and 40s and 50s stories, are there any stories, especially like the Thin Man or similar in genre, that you have considered turning into a video game? Yeah, it's called Shadowrun Returns. <laughs> uh, yeah, pretty if, much. If you look, so I wrote most of Shadowrun Returns, and if you play that, you'll get a sense of it. It, it really is Raymond Chandler, right, in the future. So, yeah, I've already done it, and uh, I'd love to do it again. I love... Uh, working on Shadowrun games. I would love to work on more. They were a joy to work on. Are we out of questions? Yeah, we're out of questions. Somebody did ask where Keller's gonna sleep if all the rooms are being used. We gave Not him my a, fucking problem. Yeah, we gave him a closet. He doesn't get a full room. He can't afford that. So we gave him a closet just to help the guy out. Um, you know. Mm -hmm. that's, pretty much, that's pretty much it. It's been honesty a couple hours. I actually thought... I'm, I'm happy because I thought there were gonna be a lot more questions about the expansion and everything and I'm glad there weren't that means that we've been getting the word out yeah and we're clear and it's clear That's like good. it's gonna be fucking awesome um uh they've been working the really hard today they got the black magic equipment today mm -hmm. they've started um Those painting right they painted the front room we had our set designer come by and start drawing up a plan Ooh. for the set um I am excited about that. I have my old crew that I used to work with. Oh, really? And, yeah. That's so bad. I built up a crew for years, and then I kind of dropped them, and now they're all doing, like, really amazing shit. So I was on the phone with her day, and she's like, yeah, this year on Baskets, there was blah, blah, blah. And I was like, oh, you mean, <gasps> god damn it. I was like, fuck, you guys all went on to do, like, crazy shit. Um, but she's like, to you. Money. To a great 2017 for the Hyper RPG expansion pack. Oh, thank you, thank baby you. D. Um, but uh, they're all my friends right now. There's nothing gets done in LA during the break. Pretty sure. much Thanksgiving to second week of January. Yeah. Fucking nothing gets done. Sure. So I am capitalizing on all my friends yeah, yeah, being yeah, on yeah. break as much yeah. as possible. I'm like, hey, Dude. guess guess what, guys? Yeah, <laughs> I'm back in town. Um, you want to work for next to nothing? I'll buy you food. So that's how that's working right now. Yeah. So yeah. So I can tell you that I'm ridiculously excited, although it's not showing on my face right now. Uh, when we decided that I would come on board and do this in addition to Death From Above, that was one of the happiest days of my entire year. Yeah. I'm not kidding. I was giddy. And uh, it really made everything for me because the excitement of doing this live stuff, of interacting with an audience live, I want to push the envelope, right? I mean. We're just at the beginning of a new form of entertainment here, this interactive entertainment. Mm -hmm. And there's just 
a lot of places to go. There's a lot of invention to be done. And so I think that's probably the coolest thing. That and the, the casts in Seattle, I mean, we the, each cast hasn't gotten close together, but I'm getting to, you know, I obviously know the DFA cast, I'm getting to know the Shadowrun cast. Obviously, AJ and Liz, I adore, and uh, and Bronze is fantastic, and I'm getting to know Tara, and I still have never met Rosalind. Still have never met Rosalind. And so that's part of the fun, too, because working with talented people is just where it's at. That's a great way to live. Sounds good. So. It's working, I'll tell you that much. No, get the fuck out of here, man. <laughs> Will Rai Rai be hosting anything? I don't know. That's up to Rai Rai. That is up to Rai Rai. Um, all right. Yeah. I'm going to see who we are going to raid tonight. Oh. It's what we do at the end of the show. While you do that. Are you going to drink it anyway, even though we didn't hit your over-the-top goal? Yeah. (laughs) I'm not doubting that. Well, maybe. No. Look, I am. All right. Who we raiding tonight? Who we raiding tonight? Looking. I'm looking. I think we owe Dreaded Cone a raid. We do. Yeah? We owe Dreaded Cone a raid. Um, all right, guys, we're gonna be raiding Dreaded Cone. All right. He's an awesome dude, and he- What's oh, he doing? Never mind. he just oh, ended. just went off. He just ended. <laughs> God damn it. Just ended. Shit. They're talking about some Shadowrun player. Is there somebody doing Shadowrun? Nah, there, we, we got, we got uh, techniques here we gotta follow. Oh, sure. Techniques we gotta follow. All right, we're gonna so raid the Mav show as a special thank you for her coming on the show yesterday. She had, she did an awesome job. So let's get the Mav show as a uh, command set up in the chat. Um, so get that command set up while I get ready to do the host. Do, 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 do. Wait, Emily's still here. Emily's gonna do the host. <laughs> Dear damn John. <laughs> I don't have to do it tonight. Thank you for the Which sucks because that just means that she's still. So what are they playing? Mav is playing. What is she playing? Oh, it's Mav. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, she was here yesterday. We we owe her one. She's playing Tom Clancy's The Division. Oh, playing neat. The Division. And they have still. All right, are you guys ready? You ready to do it? You want to lead the raid? What do I do? You tell him to go fucking raid. All right, ready? Show him your war face! Raid! Peeking! Go! Raid! 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 Get out of here! Go! Have fun! Make new friends! We'll see you tomorrow for our amazing all day long stream! It's gonna be super awesome! We're gonna be wearing ugly sweaters and playing games! It's gonna be super fun! You should tune in tomorrow! Hoorah! 1 to 10 p.m. It's gonna be stupid fun! Bye! Go! 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 Okay? Go! I like your dad. Eh. Nah. Yay. Host that shit! Are we really done? Yeah. The light's still on. I'm still on the camera.